Constitution yet. No, I'm actually taking off August, so yeah. fingers we're, crossed. We're, we're kind of August. Does everybody know this meeting is being recorded? No. Okay. <laughs> and, uh... Do you, uh, do you want to start out with the main speaker? You know, yeah. We don't have anything else pressing. Yeah, well, David's here for us, so yeah. yes. Okay. All right. Okay, so, um, so I've been thinking about this whole thing and looking at what's going on, both here and <coughs> in the rest of the world, and then taking into account the fact um, that when we approached developers with this project, they kind of gave us the cold shoulder. And so it occurs to me that the template that we're working with doesn't work. Do you, can I move my chair? Yes, please. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm just the, well, the, the air conditioning in the background. Oh, oh that's okay. You just have to make sure you're mic'd. Um, we just have to make sure you're mic'd, so yeah. well, whatever you need to do. Let's move the chair up, move yeah. the yeah. table up, right? Why don't you yeah. just think if I can be a little bit. Yeah, let's just move uh, that. Okay, so, yeah. so I would have to yeah, move the chair if you want. Okay, so what do you want? Uh, anywhere on the table. Can I go to the come in at the back? Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I hate to be a troublemaker here. No, 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 no. Dave, Dave, move the table up for me. Yeah, that's what I'm Yeah, this one up? Yeah, you can see it. Put the mic around the back side. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. But yeah, okay, you're on TV too. Yeah. So, so uh, again, the template that we're working with is not working. And we got a few hints from the people that we've spoken to about, you know, where they might want to go with this. So, um, so I'm thinking back to the presentation that you made when you first came to us, our first day, and, and, and all of the slides and the things that you showed us. Um, and, and it occurs to me that in order for this project that we're trying to do to move forward, it has to be attractive to a developer. And so what, what will attract a developer? And I think primarily they'd be willing to build housing. I mean, that's it. Yeah. That's all, that's that's, all they would. That's, that's what the market they, is. That's what they want to do. I mean, and we, um, and we actually kind of knew that after our, after our grand uh, plan to build all that commercial property over where the Berry Center was, and to end up without a stick of commercial, every bit of it is residential. We never, you know, we should learn from that that that's where the market, that's where things are going. So, and that doesn't preclude other kinds of development, but the money's going to come from the housing. Yeah. So, so basically, um, I think what needs to happen to this project is we need to eliminate the business properties. The uh, commercial entities from these buildings, from this site that we're, that we're uh, talking about. 100%? No mixed use. No mixed use. Yeah, well, we didn't finish okay. that. We're done just starting here, so. And then um, maybe some amenities on that site which were not shown in any of the plans, a pool, some kind of uh, field where they could play games and things like that. So, so, that, so that it has an attraction that goes beyond just a place to live. But um, I also think that we would want to take uh, the, the area like where Stop and Shop is and create uh, a large indoor, I'm going to call it a farmer's market, similar to what you had in your presentation. Do you remember that picture? Yeah, me too. Clearly, stuck in my head ever since. So could you just repeat that to have a large farmer's market type of thing. Yeah. Right? An indoor two-story, stores up top, little restaurants down below, seating places, but all indoors. So the kind of thing that would become a destination location, not just for the people in that complex, but from the whole town and from out of town, because it's unique. And, I, and again, I, ever since you showed that slide, I've never forgotten it. It's a unique concept, and I think we should embrace it. And I think that's uh, where, where, we would, where we need to go. So the problem is that there's no excitement whatsoever in what we're doing right now. It's boring as hell, and nobody's, nobody's interested. So if we want to move this project along, 
we need to rethink it. We need to put some, uh, we need to put some excitement back into it. Um, and I think a project like that is what would do it. <clears throat> can, can I can respond to that? Sure. So the reason this project, as I say it, is stopped is not because you and me have not formulated the right mix of uses. The reason it stopped in its tracks is no one is taking this seriously because we don't have the property owners at the table. And I think, as I see it, the market will determine the, the use of the land to me to leave commercial in there, to leave you know ideas like farmers market that's terrific stuff to get people excited but then this will play out when developers get interested developers will get interested when there's the sense that the property owners are willing to negotiate willing to come <coughs> to the table and i guess one, one you know someone's got to be excited about this yeah well, the problem is that nobody is excited about it the way right. we have it right now and so that's that's the idea is to create something that they can't get something that they can't get excited about something that they can say wow this is this is this is something different this is really a good idea and then then you might get them to come to the table but right now if they if they know anything at all and you have to assume that these business owners are relatively you know intelligent they've managed to build a business and own property and things like that so they're not dummies so they know they know when they look into the situation, similar to anybody who can, same as I did, that this template that we're working isn't going to work unless we, unless we can get a developer, unless we can get some interest in it. And the only way to do that is to get, is to eliminate some of the, uh, the, the costs that are associated with the commercial enterprises on their first floor because they're all loss leaders, they're, they're, they're losers. And so the developers don't want to build them. The, the, the reason developers are not jumping at this has nothing to do with commercial on the property. They'll do their own calculation. They don't need us to erase or you to erase commercial from the development proposal. They, they know how the market works. They'll come to the table and say, we can do you know, 15,000 square feet of commercial. And they'll just take their magic marker and they'll you know, recolor the drawings. The reason developers aren't interested in this only well, there are two reasons. One is because this isn't a hot property compared with other properties. It's not on the commuter rail line, there's no big office development, there isn't a junior college, there isn't a big commercial development right nearby, there isn't a major hospital. That's where developers are going. So all the developers have said, this isn't my first choice, you know, but I might be interested, but the property owners need to come to the table. You need, we need to be able to talk to the property owners. It's fine to talk to the architect and urban planner. It's fine to talk to the committee. We need to talk to the people who actually own the property. And it seems to me you, you, you worked at pri trying to bring them to, to the table. Suppose we had a big public meeting and invited everybody, including the property owners, but everybody in North Reading and said, hey, look at some visions you know, that, 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 that we've developed. And, you know, there's housing, there's commercial, we don't know whether we'll get this much commercial, here's community building, we don't know whether we have the money, here's a version of it that's got a farmer's market and deep retail, you know, destination shopping. Are you interested? Is the town of Reading or the residents interested? And, you know, we can get people excited with a series of options that includes what you're talking about. I, I mean, you know, um, and maybe we take a step back and go from here's, you know, we sort of synthesize all of this into a plan, sort of show that backtrack, show a series of different options and get people excited about this being in downtown. And then the property owners say, wow, Committee's actually interested in doing this. The, you know, these, you know, the planner they hired maybe has some interesting ideas. They've actually done outreach. This is looking serious. Maybe we should have a continued discussion. So I guess that's how I'm seeing that seeing it. That you know, drawings on paper aren't going to get you to where there, there are plenty of those. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what I'm suggesting. Um, 
to get people excited. Which doesn't mean you're not right about about these uses, but um, you know, they just well, part of the discussion. You know, I, I also think that um, that it may be necessary to go about getting to these people a little differently than just plain inviting them to a meeting which they tend not to show up. Yeah. So um, I think that probably uh, if we put a plan together, and, and, and again, I, I, if, you, if you think we should leave some retail into that housing, fine, but I think that that housing project needs to have amenities. It needs to have amenities that... that uh, it needs to have what? Amenities. Yeah. A pool, a tennis court, something yeah. that says this is more than just a, a place to hang your hat. And we've shown green space yeah. by the um, by the river, right? With the okay. idea so it could be any and all of that. So let's say we, we, we revamp this and we and we put a, pro, a plan together, and it includes a large building that has enough indoor space to accommodate a large number of people, so that not just the summertime and not the fall or the spring, but the, or even in the winter, you could go there and you could go to a little Mexican restaurant, a little Chinese restaurant, a little. You know, um, you know, small the small ones that you that, that you could put in a space like that, and shop in the in the second floors. And everything. If it had a place like if we put a concept like that together, and put it into a brochure type thing, and we sent it out to them, to let them look at a concept that we've put together. So in other words, we can't get them to come, but they can't stop their mail. So if yeah. we send them something and they take a look and say, "Wow, where is this? What in North Reading?" Maybe I should go see. This is what will accomplish the goal you just put out there. This is what will get the people to come to the meeting. Because talking to them is not doing it. And we've done that. We've done a scheme that's exactly like that. We came in with six different schemes. Yeah. And there were two of them had big market spaces. They had parks. They had community centers. We didn't show tennis courts. We could put tennis courts and basketball courts. But the idea, you know, there is the question of who pays, who pays for what. That's, that's true, but if we have a concept and we put it together and we get these people and, and, they, and they see something that looks like, wow, we didn't believe this town, a town could, would be even propose something like this, this is really cool, then you might get them to get excited. You might get them to be, get involved and you might be able to find the money to get, to get some of these things done. Because right now, it's, it, the pictures with all the little buildings on it is boring and it's not going to get anybody to show up. It's not going to happen. It needs to be color pictures of that that place that you should, that I, and I forget where it was. It was in the Midwest or something. Where um, it was a reuse of a car dealer or a metal shop or something. It was a big building, yeah, but it oh, was. Oh, it, it was an aircraft. It was it the, the the picture he's talking about is the the old aircraft uh, manufacturing yeah. space, and you took that space, or you, they somebody took that space and renovated it into. A, into restaurants and, and, yeah. and shops. And we've got that. We've got that. We've got all the pictures. You know, we had that. So we so have not so taken exactly that building and redesigned it, but we have come really close in saying, this is the kind of thing you can do here. But well, we don't have that picture. I want that picture. I want that picture in color, along with some of the other, some of the other concepts that we think would work there. And I wear the amenities for those, for those living spaces. And then I want to send it out to them, and I'll be willing to bet you get some response that you're not getting now. And send it to who? The landowners. The people who own the property. You mail it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a couple times. <laughs> yeah, because they may throw away the first time. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, you know, so, um, so a friend of mine just wants to start a business, and we talked about it a little bit, and he, he's, a, he's a welder, and so he's, he's a young kid. So he said, well, I want to advertise. I said, Best way for you to advertise what you want to do is this: call all the businesses that might go to all the businesses that might use your services, get their fax number, and fax them a fact sheet of what it is you do, and a little bit about pricing. Because it'll come in and they'll pick it up and look at it. What's this? And they may throw it away, but then they say, "Geez, you know that frame of this thing needs to be welded. Where's that paper from that kid?" You've got to put something in front of their faces because just calling them or sending them an invite, they're not coming. Thanks. Uh, respectfully, Warren, I, I completely agree with the pamphlet. I think that's a great idea to get it in front of people. 
I, I don't, I, I agree here though, we, I don't think the issue is what's on the plan. Like, I, I thought this was a community space for the entire town and I think getting into building amenities specific to making the apartments leasable, like a pool and a tennis court, I think is outside of the goals of what we're trying to accomplish here. I do like the idea of a food, food hall and I think, that, again, like you said, that was one of the options, but I don't know that putting that on this plan versus the plan we currently have changes it. As you said, the developer's gonna come in and decide, okay, that's too much re That's too much retail, or if you want that town hall, maybe you put the food hall under the town hall, and that's your two-story building, you have a food hall downstairs. But all those permutations can change, but I know for a fact, at least in the quote-unquote circles that I'm in in town, if people got a mailer that had like a, one, even one of the renderings that you've done to date on the front, hand, front side and said, the new downtown North Reading and the backside had a meeting that was coming up, like come show your support for a project like this in your town. I, I, I agree with you. I think the turnout would be fantastic from that. And maybe that momentum's enough. And my follow-up question, I, can you remind me if I forgive you if I didn't hear, what was the response from the parcel owners in town when we reached out to try to- Only one person. They so just ignored us or- I got two or phone calls back, yes. So I got two phone calls back, one from, um, who, yeah, who was more interested in talking about his other properties and has been pretty happy with Papagino. So isn't it really all that, you know, wasn't really all that inclined. He didn't say, no, I won't talk to you about it, but was it made it clear that that wasn't really the emphasis that he was thinking about. Um, and the other was from Mr. Heffron, who said he would like to meet, but not about the plan that we had done. And I think that the other property owners, um, I can't be confident that everyone received everything, but I did email follow-up, phone call follow-up to the degree that I could and I really couldn't get anyone. And um, I, I don't know if that's because the contact information that I have is old or dated. Some have changed hands. I have tracked down new addresses in, in one case. Um, but I still haven't received calls back. And in, in the case of Stop and Shop, who had been excited to speak with us, I thought a few years ago when Ocean State Job Lot came in, at the idea that we might be looking at some planning and rezoning efforts in that part of town, um, there is absolutely nobody who will call me back there, and I keep getting transferred to very general, um, you know, mailboxes. And there's no contact person. All the people I had spoken to years ago have have gone. And so I don't know if this is a matter of um, needing to, uh, you know, branch out as far as maybe someone has a contact who could, you know, give me a better idea of who I really should be. But because mailing to the tax addresses hasn't hasn't, you know, yielded much. Sure. Um, and I think one of my bigger concerns has been the owner of the um, the, the mobile park, which a few years, who you know a few years ago had expressed interest in looking at a redevelopment plan for that area, but I haven't heard from. And I'm I'm a little wary of advertising too widely about the concepts we're thinking of without the people who live there Displacing knowing them. about it, right? Sure. So we don't have a plan for that. And I remember early when we were thinking about this project, it was kind of like, oh, you know, sky's the limit. Let's just think about what we would really love to see there, and then we'll figure out the details. But at this point, if we're talking about having a larger meeting, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but I am I am concerned about the fact that there are you know there are people living there who we've never had a conversation with about. They're not the owner of the property. The owner of the property hasn't called me, so I I would feel a lot more comfortable if I at least w was able to reach that person. So I I'm not really sure. I I've struggled with how best to reach out to people. Um, whether anyone has any better ideas for how to reach out to people. I've sent, you know, the letters and, and have tried to reach out by phone, but I have never mailed out, you know, physical hard copies of you know, the concepts that we've thought of. Maybe that would have been the next best step. I'm definitely, you know, open to other thoughts about how better to reach the property owners. If it's, tr I mean, if they're truly just not interested and that's why they're not calling, that, you know, that would be helpful to know, but it just, it's been, you know, silence, so. Can, can I make a suggestion? You, you, so the inclination has been, we've done a bunch of work, it hasn't gone really beyond this committee. This committee is, it's all public, but I guess there aren't many people viewing this and viewing that. We've done a lot of work for cities and towns where we take other people's property, I mean, we're working with the city and town, and these are conceptual ideas about how to develop it to facilitate zoning changes, that, that that's often um, the point to build public support and never, in the years we've been doing this, as some any landowner said, how dare you do that? How dare you take my piece of property and show development ideas on it without asking me? You know, they sometimes they ignore it, like you know, they, you know, get real, and sometimes it's like I had no idea. This is really interesting. 
So my inclination is if there's been reach out to property owners and they're like not jumping, you know, up and down over it, is but it's also the jumping up and down with some combination of a big public meeting, and, and, you know, and you know a brochure. And I think having gone from six schemes to sort of a single direction that was really oriented towards developers as one target. Let's get serious. Let's make this pretty sober. Some of the early ideas were, you know, really about public spaces and excitement and destination retail and amenities. Those are. Those are kind of, th those, are, those are in there. Let's go back to that. Let's package the whole thing up. Talk about the whole process. It doesn't need to be a 100-page document. You know, call out of it. And maybe this is a three-fold you know, brochure. Maybe it's a bigger brochure. Maybe it's not a brochure at all. It's a public meeting. And then with it accessible online. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> Our team is excited. There's some excitement here. Let's 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 push that on because the property owners like they're not excited. They're just trying to run their businesses. Yeah. That's 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 my sense of things. Which again is not that you're not right about some of these, but I don't think changing the design alone is going to get people interested. It's well, I, I wasn't. You know, I, I, it, I know it's kind of a, I was painting with kind of a broad brush and to uh, to eliminate. Try to separate the residential part from the excitement part. From you yeah. know, just to get to get a developer to be to be interested in building this, because because without, uh, in my understanding, from again from the meetings we've had and from the feedback we've gotten from the developers, that is that the commercial space is basically a loser for them, and so they don't they, you know they're not interested in building something they're going to lose money on. And then they'd have to charge so much in, in, in on for the um, other ones in order to make up for it. You know, I mean, it, it becomes a, um, a di more difficult sell for them. They don't see the margin. The margin disappears into the retail spaces. The, the challenge is what we're hearing from all the developers, both on this and other projects we're doing, is you want exciting stuff, you're paying for the exciting stuff. The developer's not going to pay for the exciting stuff. And you want those amenities. This town has to pony up for the swimming pool and the tennis courts and the big market hall, at least to get it get it going. So, and that's the challenge with showing all this this exciting stuff in a public forum. People say, "Yeah, you're proposing this. You're asking me to pay for it." You know. So there's a balance between getting people excited about exciting stuff and having to deal with the question who pays for it and the more prosaic stuff like housing development, which maybe can return some money back to so, the town. So my question would be, um, going back to that slide you showed, you know, who paid for that? In other words, there had to be some kind of a program or some kind of a situation that allowed the money to, to came from somewhere to build that whole that yeah. place. And it was, it, that was a good sized place. And, and you know, a lot of tables and chairs inside on the first floor and just all kinds of things in it. So, so if that, I mean, there had to be uh, some funding source for that. Private operator, probably. And, and the usual thing is, and in when Haverhill did, did, did a whole, an RFP for development, you know, a lot of cities and towns are pumping a ton of money. Well, they're pumping, they're pumping money to this <coughs> waterfront development. So in Haverhill, they did a lot of redevelopment along the Merrimack River. Right. Lawrence Lowell redevelopment the town invest in development along the river. You don't have the Merrimack River. You have what could be a Martin's Brook. If there wasn't a six foot chain link fence around that, that could be a real amenity. You could have a path for walking the dogs. If you put in some initial money and say, we're gonna make some improvements to a real asset of this property, which is Martin's Brook in the green, then that's one way to, to, to keep the juices flowing for a developer, because that's the other thing developers are saying, you know, we're not gonna pay for the sewer system, you gotta pay for the sewer system, we're not gonna pay for improving Martin's Brook. The town needs to take some incremental steps forward. So if you could get people walking their dogs there, at least people are coming there and they're aware of this. And then you have the flea market and the parking lot. 
And so generally these are back and forth. There's some public investment, there are RFPs. Now you're at a real disadvantage because a lot of cities and towns have bought up the property. Some cities and towns would have bought up, you know, one, two, three, or four of those properties. That would make it vastly easier. So that's one area where you're competing for developers' interests against other properties that have, have municipal ownership. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, I, well, I, I, you know, I mean, I mean, I know you're correct in that, in, in, in part of that, but um, I, I think that there has to be, if we don't create a, a situation where there's some excitement, then you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to bring it to the town and get the town to say, "Okay, we'll put some yeah. money into this." If they don't see something that uh, that they think would ultimately, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a this could be a project for the economic development committee to get involved in trying to market the uh, the building, the big building with the, for the with the indoor market, or whatever. That that might be something to the market to another developer. So if we're gonna if we're gonna do that and and, and then we have the project where we build this housing and maybe it's got a little retail on it. That's not really important. The fact is that there's a, a, a with a number of buildings there, the guaranteed customer base for this development, for this commercial development. And if it's successful, it'll draw from the whole town and maybe from surrounding towns. But that's a, is the, is the town of North Reading going to pay for that? Well, for, well, I don't know that they would, but if we could get seed money from them, we might be able to develop it, uh, develop it a bit. Seed money from the town? Yes. So we need... But we need a plan that, that, that we need something that generates the excitement that will cause the town to put money into it. I do, I hear what you're saying. I do believe that there's enough work that's been done by our team that there could be real excitement. I, I mean... I think we have a lot of what you're saying in place. We just aren't, it, it's just not leaving this little group. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a meeting and you bring other committees there, you know, give me 15 minutes and a slide projector, and you know, it can get people really excited about this. Not excited about the fact that a developer is going to pay for lots of amenities mm -hmm. for the town, because that's, not going to happen, but that this property does have the opportunity to bring real rewards for North Reading through some combination <coughs> of public-private investment to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I you know, say I think you go back and look at some of the pictures. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we we don't have a quarter of a million dollar fee to do a tremendous amount of design. Right, right. But there's, you know, sometimes you don't have to design the public space. You show a couple of pictures of public spaces that could be on that property. Everybody understands it. Everyone well, looks and says, so, "So that's what we get. That's what we're back to. We're back to the fact that we 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 need the property owners involved, and we need to get them excited. And the only way we can get them excited is since they don't seem to be interested in just coming to a meeting they're invited to, or even return phone calls." Then we need to put something in front of their face that that, that says, "Wow, look at this! I, I didn't realize this is what they were talking about." But you got to get it in front of their face, and I think that the only way to do that at this particular point is with some kind of a bail. I mean, even if you don't get the top person to stop and shop, if you get it high enough up, somebody's going to say, "I better show this to management." <laughs> Would I, could I re, should I resend to all the people I sent to originally, but, but take not only just the final design concept that we have been talking about, but all of the various, I could do, you know, color slides, I could do numerous sheets and take a little packet and mail it to each of them. I don't know if that would be, would help achieve that. Yep. No, well, I, I think that, you know, well, well, I mean, you're heading that direct, the right direction there, but uh, but but I still think it, it needs to be there needs to be a little more to it, and and I think that that um, uh, that concept concept of having that indoor space that would be that would have all of this ability to provide something for the town all year long, which, you know, all year long, so that so that it would be a destination location. Because I think that could be one of a number of options 
fantastic idea. You know, that's why we showed it. We thought it was a fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. There are plenty of people who might say, that's not what we need. You know, we need tennis courts in a swimming pool. Someone else might say, oh, we need something else. So I think that should be one of a number of options with the idea about the potential to play out. Yeah, in you know, if you look at the amenities for the apartments, mm -hmm. the town's not going to build the amenities for the apartments. The apartments have to build the amenities for the apartments. The town is not going to build a swimming pool because they had one. And it got filled in because of the liability insurance cost. Yeah, well, Someone got hurt. Right? It would be a homeowner. Right. A it's it's got to be. It's that. That's got to be totally out. And I, I have a, a, a talking to some of the people. They're very concerned with more housing, especially there. You know, we're talking two, three bedrooms. Then they're, 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 they're going to worry about oh, the schools are going to get overloaded again. That, that, that's one of the big things is really worried about the schools because we spend so much money on those schools. Mm -hmm. And apartments aren't, we're never really in the, I'm pretty sure in the population projection, projection of the school system. You know, it's always been single family homes and how they adjust. If, if that's the position we're going to take, there's no sense in even doing this project. Well, I, what, we, what we've got so far, I don't think is bad. One of the things I see is when the, if the property owners look at it and they see a, a building that's like community building, who's going to pay for that? I think that should be gone, and that's a discussion after the. <coughs> They figure out you figure out what to do with the property, or if we get somebody in to develop the property, then we pony up. If you're going to put a uh, some kind of a community building, or if you go want to put town hall, which I always thought would be a great place, we got to build that. That's something that the town has to build. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have to own that but building. We can, but or, if we sell this property to to the developer, we can certainly have right, enough money right. to build the town hall. All right. For me, one of the, the hurdles for the people in the town in, in taking this seriously is it actually having a plan to pull it together. Mm -hmm. And just conceptually, I, I agree, the town hall always seemed like a good fit to relocate to that. Yep. And I wonder if, and this is a hypothetical entirely because I don't have any idea how the numbers work out, but if you pull together appraisals for this property and like the stop and shop property and you came up with a conceptual site plan for stop and shop where you did have you were saying to the town, listen, we want, our plan is to acquire the stop and shop property. Again, just make up numbers, right? $3 million, build a $2 million town hall on it, and sell this property to make back your $2 million. It's a $1 million investment, mm -hmm. and you've created the cornerstone, and here's the brochure for the, what right. we envision for a larger mm -hmm. development in the future. But we're, at, we're telling the town, hey, we gotta be, take the first step. We're going to put the town hall in the back here. We're going to develop the river. We're going to create a place where people are already coming. And now we have that plan, and we start getting public support for that. You unroll the larger plan. Now you get something to bring to investors and say, hey, look, put together these other nine parcels. Total valuation is $10 million, give or take, right? Now you have something tangible for them to look at and say, hey, if we go in, if we can get that for 10 to 12, we already have a town center right there. We already have people coming there. This... Now you have a, a tangible development to, to send to investors versus right now it's probably the tech people in the town are like, yeah, how the hell are you going to do that? Right. Invest developers are like, how the hell are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. And nobody has a real plan. And I know you can't go to the people in the town and just say, we're going to build town hall here because everybody's up to here in taxes as it is anyways. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a plan that somehow offsets. You can come up with an investment, but you better have a good plan to offset that investment because people don't want another... 30 year hike of a thousand dollars in their taxes like the right. schools so in my mind that shows developers you're serious about it it gives people something to get excited about and honestly it doesn't it doesn't seem like a very heavy investment to just no, to pick that one right. parcel I really, I really like that whole concept I, I don't know if the I don't know if the numbers work at all well, so I, I that know, could I be yes but, like but, but if we could if, but the concept is good I mean that we to get a corner like you said cornerstone in place but but um so, but it goes back to getting them, getting the town uh, willing to do that. They, so, so it goes back to selling them a vision of what happens next. Yep. That, 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 that this is, 
this is the first step, but the reason we're doing this step is because this is what we want to happen next. Right. And, and I think that's the, that, that's the concept. And some people are going to be risk averse to even yeah. spending the money to do the design on it. Well, some people are going to be willing to do that. Some people are going to say, go build it and like, let's figure it yeah. out afterwards. Yeah. But I mean, I think at least if you can start advancing design, you'll start getting more support. Yeah. And then who knows, maybe it dies on the vine, but I don't see how you get support beyond that or get developer interest until you have something, yeah, well, a like, tangible again, plan with, again, with, with real with money. Some, with something that, some, some kind of a plan that has some excitement to it that you, where you can get stop and shop to at least say, hey, what are you planning on really doing here? Or, or somebody else, and there's got to be something more than what we've done so far, because what we've done so far is going nowhere. So and that's a big parcel too, right? So yeah. you could have... Rich, you had a comment? Yeah, so I think it really truly is a public and private uh, combination of yeah. efforts. And so, if uh, what we heard before from Gordon, was it Gordon felt we came in here? Open up the permitting, make the permitting be an easy thing for developers to think about, right? We actually have a process. Yeah, right. we so don't have the permit with them. We have to kind of come forward saying we're going to work with them to make that happen so they don't have that as a sticking problem. And the other one is the package treatment plan, right? And that we know is $3 million. Let's think about how, if we anteed up that, let's say we put in the, the package treatment plan, right? How are we going to pay for that? Well, right now the revenue from those five property owners is $190,000 a year. If you put in the housing we're talking about, not even including the retail, if you put in the housing we're talking about, um, you're going to be generating about $1.6 million per year. That is a tremendous payback to do all of this funding we're talking about. And it's something that we don't have right now. And that if we're doing it, it's new money. It'll help fund all these things we're talking about, the town hall, community center, um, and the package treatment plant, we're still going to come on the positive side. So that by the time the sewer comes down and connects up with us in 10, 12 years, we're hooked up and we're home free. And we have ourselves a great, a great uh, self-funded um, uh, project that we can hang our hat on. But what do developers want to hear? And what do the owners want to hear? How much are they going to get how, if we buy them out? Not everybody wants to be part of the project. They want to be bought out. Well, it's forty to $50,000 per door, just to permit. So it's, if you can show that you're going to give them a permit for 140 units, do the math. It's 40,000 times that. Whatever their share is, that's what we can buy them out. And I think I estimated around $10, 11000000 million, so we're pretty close to that. So I think we have working numbers, but we've got to be talking to these owners and working numbers, and we have to be comfortable saying, okay, we think, we don't have to decide, but we think we can do the package treatment plan because we're investing for a development that's going to give us payback on that in two, three years. And we think that you're going to get forty to fifty thousand dollars per door from a developer to buy you out, or you can potentially become a partner and participate in this going forward. I think there's, I think there's a fiscally responsible position here that we should really be thinking about. I'd love your thinking about sell this, use that money to help fund town hall. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, and then uh, today I just talked to the UMass gerontology people. And they told me the most successful intergenerational community center they've ever seen in the state is in Randolph, and it was a combination of the intergenerational community center with the municipal buildings, all connected. It's so the most successful one going on. So we're on, I believe we're on the right path. And it's not in an isolated area. It's in a community center, which is going to make your downtown thrive. Now, what about the uh, town facility master planning? That was sort of bogged down. It's certain. It's still it seems down. like there's a whole yeah. group setting So my understanding is my understanding is that it's the fire station first and it's going to be a rehab of the current fire station. And we have frontage to be able to bring that out. That way we're not building a second station. So there's no talk about a second station. So that's you know that's a twelve million dollar savings right there. And then the other thing I've heard is next up is the the DPW, the open, you know, the four season wheeler shed. Yeah, the barn. Uh, yeah, the barn. The barn. That has to be looked at because apparently that's falling down. Yeah. But that's not heated, that's not any of that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. It's just a shell. Yeah. Next up is the intergenerational community center. With or without the state support, that is that, that is the third on the list of things to take care of. But can you get the committee that's looking into all of this on board so that this committee and that committee are working together with the shared board? Well, I think that what I've heard, again, this is you know not formal votes or anything, but what I've heard is everybody's on board with creating a downtown center. The only thing we're arguing about is where the intergenerational community center should go. And I can make an argument for both cases. Um, I'm probably, I would be clearly saying, I think it belongs in the downtown area because I don't think, you know, uh, it's a sugar park for 
older people is a two month, maybe three month year thing. We've got nine, 10 months of, of, uh, of things that happen. And I think the amenities should come through the intergenerational community center to some degree. Because I think that's the Parks and Rec should be sitting in. They should be offering those programs to rising seniors, to seniors, and the youth who are coming from the schools who are not part of athletics, who are not doing after school programs. I agree, Rich. And to your point, the housing study wise, I think this development is very appealing to empty nesters yes. who want to stay in town. So it, it's empty it's nesters, kind of a, and it's good the young people in town who have been pushed out and can't live back in the town. I would take the three bedrooms out of this, I would take townhouses out, it's one or two bedrooms. Yeah. Um, it should, and it shouldn't be five floors. Five floors is way too high, it's going to repel people. You know, three, maybe four. Um, and let's make it let's make it exciting for them. You know? The difficulty was that we, the we laid out three floors, and every developer said exactly the same thing. They don't want to. It one. will never, ever, ever happen because we cannot only give the property owners enough I money mean, enough to do it. I understand. That's why we have to empty up. We have to empty up some. We have to show that we're not just asking them to come in. We have to empty up some money. Realizing from our tax revenue, we can fund these things and make it happen. I if think you don't have all this stuff working together, it's not going to work. You could be strategic too with the five. That? I think you'd be strategic too with the five floors. I mean, I wouldn't rule it out at this point. I don't want it like a wall on Main Street, but right. if this one, of the, if they're in the back, yeah, you know what I mean. The back you can be creative with it. Yeah, you know, and I don't know the the shadow lines in that area, like yeah. where the like, directionally sunset. You know, you wouldn't want it on Main Street, right? Because you'd be blocking the sun all right. afternoon. They'd be, they'd be facing west, so the, so the ones in the, in the you know, 28th here, west is this way, so the, the right. setting sun comes this way, so your shadows are going to be this way. It would be on the development if you had them along 28. Yeah. So you wouldn't want them there. But on the back side... If you went on the back side, you don't want them on the really street side of 28. You could go, you know, maybe, you know, three or four stories here, and then right. maybe from five or stories to the back. Taller in the back, like with stop and drop yeah. is not. Yeah. 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 But but I'm seeing tremendous, I, I believe that we have had consistent communities for doing something in the community center. We've had that, and if we approach it right, and it's not just the seniors, it's the rising seniors, the empty nesters. Yeah. Those are the rising seniors. That's really who we're going after, is the rising seniors, because they're going to be seniors, but they're the ones who's going to bring vitality, activity to downtown. We yeah. capture them, we get everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's our, that's our demographic. I think it's good to remember, too, commercial doesn't necessarily mean restaurants and shops. It can mean doctor's office, eye doctor. It can Professional, mean, yeah. Every, any number of different things, yeah, too. Yeah, so. a lot of different things. So the nice thing, thing about the farmer's market thing is if you have one guy fail, you're not losing the whole place. You're that's right. You're losing one little small vendor. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and, and then, then you're then getting another one. one there waiting to move right in. Yeah. I, I think this is a sell. I really think this is a sellable program. But I, to get the develop, we only have we already know two, right? One is resistant, but we know we have one. I don't think he's interested in doing what we have, uh, yeah. what the concept we've okay. done. But we only have five people we got to, right? You've already lost Starlight. It was just sold to a new, the new owner, mm -hmm. and they're putting I don't know how many thousands of dollars into that building. It's going to be hard to get that one. You don't, you don't need that or Yeah. Well, that's two. So. Everyone's got a right. Thank you for your time. I don't mean to make this a debate. Um, I just want to respond a little at personally as a rising senior <laughs> living in town. Um, I just think there's a whole lot of what ifs and maybes and I don't know over there. Um, we don't own any of it. It all has to be, it, it's just too complex, I feel. I feel the idea is wonderful. I don't think it's the right place personal opinion. I think we have a lot of um, town owned land that we could be looking at, other possibilities. I think it's a great idea. I don't think it's the right spot. That's just my personal opinion. That's one reason to not be too specific and say there'll be some combination of commercial and retail and public places. It may or may not be a town hall, it may or may not be a multi-general community center, but, 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 you know, if you're too specific and you, you the plenty of people exam on the place, if you're more general, you say, yeah, yeah, this is a great place of a public entity, let's, 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 let, let's explore this further. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I don't know that we have, I don't know that we have any other apostles in town that are located in, in, in the kind of a, that are in the kind of a location that would be 
as accessible to all of the things that are on Main Street. I mean, that's that's really the key, is to have it. Uh, I mean, if you did a combination of things of, of putting this kind of development in there, and then you did the three-lane conversion on 28 and things like that, you could actually slow that traffic down. You could create uh, a situation that's more like what goes on in Reading Square or, or uh, um, Andover Square. Which, so there's a possibility to create, I mean, there is some issues with it in that there's not a lot of, in both Reading and in the end over there are back streets, so there's access, but you're not going to get a back street on the west side of 28. So, um, okay. so we, we are not on our current contract going to resolve all of the issues. I think the greatest gift we can give you is to facilitate a dialogue that will outlast. I mean, we'd love to keep working with you, but at some point, you know, we're going to be done. To facilitate discussions, to give you material to keep those discussions going. Almost always when we do, you know, planning projects like this, we have public meetings. You know, this is, and part of this is COVID. It's been hard to have public meetings. Yeah. I mean, for 16 months, it's like that wasn't happening. <coughs> Generally, you know, people, and you know, you can also have it on Zoom, you get people together, they get excited, you do a dog and pony show, you come up with lots of questions, lots of answers, you ask people for their input, they feel listened to. You may say, this is fantastic, you may say, someone say, I have problems with this, but they feel like they've been listened to, you get the dialogue going, and the different people, the property owners, hopefully will say, Wow, there's something going on. Maybe I actually ought to return Daniel's phone call. You know, maybe I ought to return a letter because people are actually talking about this. It's not eight people locked up in a room, you know, talking amongst themselves. So that's my kind of suggestion is we can, you know, take what we've done, we can supplement it to represent specific ideas or general concepts and reach out and make it public. Um, mailings you know, one way to do it. But sometimes you get everybody in a room, and I did bring my mask, because we're all, I'm like worried, like are we, you know, headed back in the wrong direction? Mm -hmm. You know, but at public meetings, often the real work is done not at the presentation, it's afterwards, with different groups of people are talking with each other, and someone sees someone they haven't seen before in a different committee and saying, let's talk about this. There's some, I don't agree with all of this stuff, but let's talk about this. So I guess that's the thought. To, how to keep the dialogue going. Yeah, we, we've got to do something because your contract should be kaput. <laughs> because, only because I, you know, I knew the, what the contract was. So uh, well, we, we really try to have to draw this to an end for yeah, them. Yeah, I um, and having that one, if we can do a public meeting or a public Zoom or something, that would, you're right, that brings in you know, ties everything up. Well, you're going to have to decide if you want to, if you want to do that, you're going to have to decide if you want to go with what we actually have all done right well, now. Well, first of all, if you look at what, what we brought them on for, it was to, to look at what could a um, wastewater treatment plant, package plant, handle, and what would it cost? Mm -hmm. Well, all of the, the, he's done that with what, what's on paper now without changing a thing. Mm -hmm. Without changing a thing, he's done that. They've done that. Right? Because that, that $3 million package plant can handle all the property there. So they've actually completed their the contract, as I see it. I think that was one piece of it, and then the second piece of it had to do with some development concepts. And we do have several we other have development concepts, have including development the market concepts. hall one. Right. So, I mean, without, I think if we were to ask for much more in the way of design, I think we would not be able right. to. Um, so I'm not saying, yeah. let me out of here, you know, you've got six more hours and, and then we're done. All I'm saying is, it's no, not no, going to forever. That. And really, we're excited about the opportunities. We'd like to leave you in a really good position. And, you know, this is the suggestion, one, one way of, of, of moving this forward, given the frustration, you know, pursuing the landowners one by one. Right. one. Right. Well, I'm, I'm also, you know, frustrated about that. And, but I think that's a, that's a great way, you know, and I, the people who live, you know, in the, behind Starlight, in that little community, <coughs> if they don't know about it by now, 
how would they I mean, got it? Well, they there's know? lots of people in town know about it. I've been asked okay. by other people. Okay. You know, okay. Um, so if if they maybe they don't, you know, they might yeah, have their they thinking. may have they may not be informed. I don't know, but I'm going to guess. But and just like you're saying, you said that you're to come in with a concept. I'm not saying we're going to take anybody's property, and that's not what we're planning on doing. And we're not going to put anybody out on the street, you know. Um, so I, I, I don't, I don't see it as a real issue. On, you know, this is this is the design concept. What we, what we're part of the project was is to make sure the viability of, of the treatment plant, and what it could handle, and then the other part was the development mm -hmm. concepts. Mm -hmm. We've got both of those issues right now. And I think taking it to the town at this point, for the people who know about it, who want to know more about it, it would be, it's good timing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's good timing, it's good timing for us, it's good timing um, for, for, them, for them, you know, to, to try to wrap this project up. I mean, you guys have been doing a great job. Um, I just think we're gonna supplement that meeting with some sort of concepts funding plan. Mm -hmm. You know, there's gonna be some, First question everyone's going to ask is how you pay for it. Yep. So if we don't have at least conceptually an idea yeah. of like a land swap, transaction, town investment, payback, term, etc., you got to at least on a high level be able to outline yeah. when you're going to no, see the return I'm on not, investment. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying no, yeah. but that's 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 the level of yeah, a very high level. But yeah. you have to you have to right. thought of you it. Have you can't just be able to do pitch. something right. Yeah. And, and it's I think you know we always thought it was going to be some some town. Uh, Injection of money somehow up front, yeah, up front, and hopefully to get it started. Exactly, yeah, especially yeah. the treatment plant. Nobody yeah. wants to pay for the treatment plant because they're not going to own it. You know, they're going to have to pay the hand. They're going to have to pay for using it, so that part of it's covered. Yeah, but someone has to build it. You know, it would be great if you could get a developer to come in and say, "Oh yeah, I'll build that treatment plant and I'll put all these buildings in, and uh, this is what we're going to get." You know, just what we want. Well, that's not going to happen. You know, that's that's pie in the sky. And I understand that. So there has to be some, there has to be some investment by the town. What that is and how it is, that's to be decided later on. Yeah. But I, and I, so I agree with you. Yeah, we got There's a high level. That that high level, we've got to talk about that. Where is it coming from? We have to get some buy-in, I guess, from the select. Because they. Oh, sorry. It, I mean, is there a level of that conversation that would need to happen before we did a public meeting? I just, I, I might be wary of, um, you know, introducing a kind of proposal that talked about town money going into a development concept without having had a larger discussion. I'm just thinking of like select board, finance committee. I don't know if that. Right. Well, no, no. Before. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was just saying. You get a good select board on. Prior um, to. Yeah. Can't talking just, publicly about you, you can't just go out there they have to if they don't support it they're going to be the first ones to say something and they'll say it even before we're we're had the the uh the meeting the public hearing the public meeting i think it would be difficult to have a public meeting without having yeah some understanding from yeah, absolutely the, the other thing that's made this project different for most projects we do is exactly this generally we will talk to other community heads and other department heads you know, we're working for one committee that there needs to be consensus in the town. So is there a way, you said there's an economic development committee. Mm -hmm. One would think to bring someone on board and, and talk to them about that, because you're right. I'm, I'm right here. What? <laughs> I'm, on that, I'm on that committee. Okay. We talked about that tonight, and there, you know, because the, the people that were here when you got here, that was the economic development committee. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. They're not. They're not ready. I, you know. I think they want a little bit more uh, involved a concept out. But you know, they're not a, averse to, to doing that. Because yeah. a public meeting it would be great if you had three or four people with different committees and different departments saying a lot of work can be done, but this is an interesting idea, as opposed to saying I'm on this other committee and like what are these guys doing? Like. Yeah, no, they, 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 they've all, they've heard about it. Yeah, they, yeah, well, that was kind of our charge, right, from the last select board meeting was to go do this and come back. 
right? When we got the approval for the funds to yes. do this. Yeah, yes, right? yes. Yeah. way back when we first we got We kind of presented it, we fumbled our way through it, nobody yep. knew what we were talking about, but yep. they still gave us the money to do this because it was already approved. Right. right. So now we have a plan, and I think that's the next step. The next step to is talk to the plan. Is there any federal to state to local money trickling down? I mean, different towns and cities and we're working for suddenly are able to do projects that they weren't able to do. Yeah, that's we're not in the right city. Well, we have a lot of <laughs> infrastructure money, right? There we have, yeah, money. In, infrastructure money, we do. Yeah. But, you know, you're talking about stuff that's like gateway cities, like Lawrence, Bowl, you know, yeah. The, those those places that they, they get these big the businesses get huge grants from the state. You know, Springfield and bigger bigger towns and cities yeah. and towns and not towns, motor cities are getting these mm -hmm. these monies. Yeah. Because they've got buildings that need to be renovated and refurbished and mm -hmm. yeah, you know, we, we we get. Every once in a while, we get a little bit of grant, right, from from the state. Yeah. But it's it's minuscule compared to what they're getting. Yeah. You know, it's tens of thousands. They get millions. The opportunity zones. Right. They're opportunity zones, and they don't see us as an opportunity zone. They see us as a bedroom community, and that's kind of, I think, one of the reasons we were trying thinking about doing business in this town was to get away from that bedroom community um, concept here. Get more business here than that, you know, that would, over here at, at the, the old uh, Berry Center properties. It, it's all bedroom community now, you know, um, and, and this one down here, um, before the before sewer came in, because when that happens, that property is just going to hopefully go crazy, um, but we don't know. And that's, what, that's what we're hoping for. And there's no reason, nobody we've talked to says, no, 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 you can't have commercial. They're just saying, you know, you, you place it strategically at the gateway so you have a minimal amount of area with the maximum impact for right. the housing that pays for it behind it. So it right. can be, you know, you know, because that's always been the vision, right, that, that it's not it's not just more housing. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it won't, I don't think it'll fly totally in town with big apartments and more housing because people to, people are worried about what I was talking about. They're worried about the load on schools because that that has not been calculated in as it's all been single family homes for for, for students. <coughs> and they but, see us pretty much just built out. But we hear repeatedly when the detailed studies are done that it's not as much of a drain on town resources and anticipated when they look at the taxes that are coming in and the impact on the schools. It's not like, oh my God, now we're gonna have to build a $50 million school, you know, because we built some apartments. So I'm not saying there's not validity to it, but before the hysteria starts, maybe some analyses are done. Well, yeah, do it up front and answer the question before, the, answer the question before it's asked. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. So we need to get to that point so well, we can. Right. Yeah. Edgewood. We um, there was uh, uh, they gave us an idea about how many kids we would probably have in school, and if I if I'm correct on that, but they were pretty much right on the money within a few. But I don't think we get. Oh, that at many, Edgewood. Yeah, we don't get that many. We don't get many kids out of there. That's that's one and two apart. Uh, one and two bedroom apartments. There are oh, the last time I it was between fifty five and sixty. Yeah, kids. that's probably they're, more. Than what they're they at said. the break even point now yeah. with the money. They, as I far think as originally the when they came in, they said they were going to be like thirty students in there yeah. total. It and is more than they're, they're, yeah. they're they're over that almost by twice now, and, and so now it's no longer a positive cash flow. I mean, I think it's, it's about it's about even. fifty fifty. You know, schools schools in this town eat up about what sixty percent of the budget. I don't know. Yeah, no. Something something close to that. Just so the general more. government gets the other four. Well, I asked the select yeah. people yeah. about sixty seven percent. I was pretty close, huh? Yeah, you were. Yeah, it's no, way over fifty percent. Kid is fifteen thousand. Yeah, yeah, it's not cheap here. It's expensive. They get a good education. I gotta say that. Yeah. They, have, they get a very good education. So. Yes, Rich. So I, I propose that, because um, it sounds like the select board needs a story, it sounds like at some point the town needs a story, and it sounds like 
the property owners, owners in the story. I suggest that we put together a slide show, PowerPoint presentation, all reviewed by you guys, because you guys are leading it, you're, you're, you know, you're in charge, but we put together a story about what the plan is, and use that as a way to come to agreement about the stories we're trying to deliver. When we have that slideshow, then we can go to the select board, then we can go to the town, then we can go to the property owners. And it'll, it'll serve three purposes in one shot. Okay, well, I guess I have a question about... Um... And I'll add, I'm happy to help do that, because I've done this a million times before in my life, so I'm happy to help yeah. you put together a story. Okay, so my, my question, though, is to Ryan's point here is, um, who would be qualified to put some numbers on some of these things to so that when we get asked the question we have at least a basic financial plan to get the whole thing rolling. So I have numbers that I've acquired over the years <laughs> by asking a lot of questions. I'm happy to tell you the source of that and we can always dig in deeper to find the answers to those questions. Okay. But I do I have done the math. As part of the story we need absolutely some you absolutely have to do the fiscal the part that everybody's gonna ask is how do you pay for it? The reality is we can pay for it. And we can pay for it, it'll be and it'll we have the money to be able to do it if we do this. Because the, again, the thing is it's $190,000 now. It can be 1.5, 1.6 million going forward. If we get 10 years life out of it, that's a lot of money. That's yeah. 12, 13 million dollars. That goes a long way to making this project happen, You're paying back the town. And you end up with a community center that I keep seeing study after study, including the new mass gerontology one. People want this, they really need this. And here's the big, I, I want to give you one red flag from the new mass gerontology study. In all the studies that U.S. gerontology has done in Massachusetts, they've done 50 towns. We have the first, we have the worst rate of people under 60 who are going to stick with our town after the kids get from school. By double, we're at 39 percent of people who, when their kids get out of school, they're out of here. And the the highest town next to that was 19 percent for Swanson. Everybody else is lower than that. Why are they coming here? They come here for the schools. They come here for transactional, get their kids through schools, and they're out of here. And they're taking our resources and our spirit along with them. We have to reverse that trend. This is community planning commission. We have to reverse that trend and get the people who are empty nesters to stay in our town. Those are the rising seniors. If you don't give them a community center, the athletic fields work when their kids are in school. Are you gonna make it summer on the too? So yeah, talk forward. to the chair. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, but anyways, but if you don't give them a place where they have a community center, which is our biggest deficit, you, you know, you're not gonna keep them because that's what they that's what they're looking for. And that keeps coming up. It's not my numbers. It's the studies we've seen. So we have told this story the two years when we've been working for a year and a half, a number of different ways. And I think that there's nothing place that factoring in the other, you know, all of the things you're talking about can set the stage for how this unfolds and then the, and then the punchline. Yeah. So I think we want to hear it, that, that we can change the bullet. <laughs> that's valid to what we're talking about, because it's a community thing. And our demographic is the seniors. Yeah. It's, that's what's growing. And I'd be happy to work with whoever it, it is on the committee, and yell with you, yeah. saying, why don't we have to add, you know, we're the outsiders looking in. You're the yeah. insiders how to make it really true. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, you guys would have to, you know, we have to support it. So, I mean, not just creating it, but also with the final stories. And that's obviously your, your choice. I, mean, mm -hmm. I can just give you the information I know. Where I think I know. That's a great idea. You're right on target. Happy to do it. I think we just got to got to work with what we got. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not I'm, I'm not saying. Your idea is bad. I, I like the idea of some of us already. They've already given some. Yeah, just, it's just right. pulling the stuff you've already done. Right. Some of it we've already shown. It, it's we've it's just past. we just have to the, the total change of the of what we've got. I think we work with what we have and add that stuff in. Yeah, you know it's flexible right now. It's we're not in stone, and even if we come up with something, we're not going to have enough 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 funds in this to take a developer is going to. Change how they're going to want to do it. Right. All they'll we can do is put it here and there. They'll they'll make it good for us, but yeah. they're still going to want to build what they're going to build. Right. You sell or, the vision and you place the cornerstone. Right. And you bring someone else in to build exactly, the rest. Exactly. Exactly. 
So all, all of that other stuff, right, that we add now is, is going to be ancillary yeah. later on. Yeah. They'll, they'll look at it and say, this is great here. I got an idea what we can do up in front. Yeah. Or you get a Papaginos that says, I'll sell, but I want my Papaginos to be right here. That's right. But it's done. You it and, right and, and you know what? <laughs> and, 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 and that the doll won't do it for them. If that, yeah, if it makes the deal work. If, right. the, if it makes the deal work and it's not expensive and it won't be, they'll, they'll put it in there and that's fine. We don't lose them. And maybe right. Global Park be, will become your first sentence. Right. And the, well, that's, that was my other thought. That's my other thought. It's one bedroom, it's two bedrooms. How big is it? Yeah, they're, 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 they're not that. I don't know. You know, some of them were three, I think. But, you know, they don't own any of it. They rent it, so. Yeah, so are they going to afford to put them to an apartment? I don't know what they rent them to. It's a lot of lives, yeah. And the yeah. key is that the story, everyone sees something in it from them. What's that? that everybody in the story sees something in it for them. They may not like half of it, but the other half is like, yeah. You know, yeah, you're a property right, owner, right. or you're a rising senior, or a whatever. I'm not already a senior, so. <laughs> I'm still rising. <laughs> I'm alive. Oh, that's alive. I like to think of myself as rising. Good one, Ryan. It's okay. It's, uh, uh, I've never heard that term before. That's a good one, isn't it? That's a good one. Well, all right. Um, oh, okay, well, we really need to uh, move forward with this, so. Yeah. So, um, let's. Uh, <coughs> Danielle, do you want to orchestrate this, talk to the different parties, and talk to us and set a direction? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, she's not following this one, and I haven't seen her take that one in a long time. So eager. Okay, so I will say this this project has been talked about a lot. Um, we frequently have selected members at our meetings, and I'm sure they're all well aware of what we've been working on, but we have, there's a very large variety of opinions, and I think we've known that from the very beginning. There is some point where we're going to have to just get together and have it out. We have yeah. to talk together. I think the two boards have to just talk, and I maybe even including the finance committee, I'm not sure if, if there's interest there, but there are a few very fundamental things that the boards have different perspectives on and even members within the same boards have different perspectives on and until we can make some like for example the idea that there would be any public investment in this project at all is something that is a very very wide range of opinion about and we have to just talk it out and figure that out before we go to the public with any of this I think that's my own opinion about it I one person I'm not going to be able to I, I could sit down individually with each of the board members and get all of their five opinions I probably could anticipate what they were, but we have to, I think, talk about it as boards together, maybe. So, I, I, again, just get the story together first. Let's do it sequentially, right? Get the story together first, but you guys support the numbers, you feel good about it, everything else like that. And then I would probably go to the select board first and get their opinion on your, on your thoughts, massage it, you know, potentially get the facility master planning people to join at the same time, get their thoughts. And then at some point, the final product would be go to the town. Because all I want to see you guys do is make your best case, and if the town votes it down, you know, we get our best shot, right? I mean, that's, that's really what it's about. But, um, but without a good story, without coming forward, what you think is best and what you think is going to work, um, you never get that shot. I, just, I, I really just want to see you have that shot with the end of you. If it gets voted down, that's fine. You know, that's the town's decision. I, I, I think that my only, my only attempt here <clears throat> was to try to create a project that was marketable. That was what? Marketable. Yeah. To create a project, uh, or to, to uh, massage this project, if you will, into a, into something that a developer would walk in and say, okay, now that works for me. Yeah, I'd like to do this. So, I mean, we can, until somebody expresses some level of interest in doing the project, I mean, then we can then, we could then take and say, okay, we can make, you know, we, we can make uh, the permitting easy, we can do, you know, all kinds of, give all kinds of help with the permitting, and, and perhaps have some uh, uh, input from the town or some financial support from the town. I mean, so we do have to have that discussion with the board, so there's no question about that, to see if they, if, but, but the project that we bring to the board of selectmen has to be one that we know is marketable. And one that well, I, think, I think you've gone too far. We're bringing a concept. We're not bringing a project. I think that's that's where 
I'm, I'm losing it with you. Okay, well, the in, in that it's, it's only a concept right now. It's not hard. This is not what they're going to build. Yes. It's, it, the concept was for, first of all, the two-part thing was to, to make sure that a, a package plant would work there and for how many units it would work and what the concept for that area could be. And I think that's what we have. We have, we have the answer about the, the, the treatment plant. And that's hard answer. That it'll function mm -hmm. in there for the number of units that could go there under this concept, yeah. and it, and it can carry units, or, or it's got this much flow, so it can carry whatever it can handle. The flow can go in there. So if the concept changes, this this treatment plant could still function. Getting the getting um, financial backing is important just to get this off the ground and like I said nobody is going to want to pay for that treatment plant. Right. You know, um, they're going to pay for the use of the treatment plant and paying for the use of the treatment plant may bring back some capital cost of the tre treatment plant but there's not maybe other ways to bring back some money there, I don't know. Um, so it, it might be one of those things. The tax revenue once you put the treatment plan in, what gets in there, that's going to bring money back to, but, to pay that back. Can I ask a question? You don't own the land. You're right. talking about building a package treatment plan at town's expense on property owned by seven landowners who have expressed very little interest in this. This project, I've talked to six developers, they all say the same thing. Well, we might be able to make this work. But not when there's seven property owners have shown no interest in it. That is the huge, 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 huge obstacle. Is you want to build all this wonderful stuff for the town, you still don't own the property. That's the obstacle. You either need to buy the property or you need to get the landowners interested in working in some combination of the town and the private developer. And it seems like so much of the storytelling is really about the landowners, but we can't drag them to the table, so let's get everybody else interested with the hope of that they try to jump on the bandwagon. But that's, we, we, we really gotta keep that in mind. I think from the beginning, the discussion had been, or at the beginning, the discussion had been to figure out if the shared package treatment plant was feasible, but to have it be privately funded. And I'm not sure if that's realistic at all, but I think that was our Original. Yeah, original. Yeah. Like that I think wasn't originally talked about as being a town investment and I remember early on there were a lot of people who said oh if that's the town investment then that's not worth it we're looking at sewer. Right. So I, I could see that being a real you know serious detriment if now we're looking at that as potentially being a public investment I feel like that wouldn't go over from what I, the feedback that I've heard from other boards I feel as though that would just wouldn't go over well. Um, and also for the facilities master plan, I mean, Abby has said on t at least two occasions now that she's concerned that that group and this project are kind of working at cross purposes. And that's because I think they are solely looking at reuse and, um, not reuse, but um, refurbishing existing town buildings. They're not looking at acquiring any new property. They're not looking at moving town facilities anywhere. They're looking at what are the rehab, you know, steps that have to be taken for each of the town facilities that they're looking at. So I don't even know that, I mean, that's maybe another issue that we really have to talk about. I mean, if we're talking, if there is support at all for looking elsewhere than what the town has its facilities on, I mean, that's really a conversation we need, we need to have. I mean, if there is interest, I think that's wonderful and exciting. It's just that it, it comes up all the time, but there's never been a consensus about it. So I kind of feel like we need to get there too if we're thinking of having any kind of town facility as part of this project. Well, if the, if the facilities master plan bring to the board of selectmen a proposal to refurbish this building and build a community center at Hipster Tula Park, then essentially they've taken the two primary things that we want it to happen off the table. We've taken, <coughs> what was your last statement? If the, if the um, facilities master plan people bring a proposal to the Board of Selectmen to rehab this building 
and to put the intergenerational center in Ipswich River Park, that they've taken the two major things yeah. we were working towards off the table. So I thought we had also conceived of this as being possible as a completely private development too, because I think we always knew that we may not get a town facility over here, but even if we didn't, that there could be all kinds of other, you know, interesting anchors, or I remember that has been sort of a theme running through this, that we may or may not ever get a town thing over there. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how there's I'm looking at that. And yeah, that's an interesting spin too, because if, if you looked at it like that, again, hypothetical numbers, but if you looked at strictly like the stop and shop parcel, you could do, do something like that and do a very low investment return on that for some sort of food court or food truck type area and refurbish the river walk, et cetera. Very small town investment, but kind of create the cornerstone, the you know, park gathering place, if you will, for the development to facilitate mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So in other words, if we could, could potentially work both ways with them without if we could, if we could buy the stop and shop property, you say. Yeah. Because we would need that property to start the process. Yeah. Well, at least in this current plan that we have, anyway, if I remember it correctly, that was kind of located at the back of the parcel. That's obviously yeah. the biggest and most expensive yeah. parcel, too. Right. Right. So it, I'm not. It, that's the biggest that. parcel by far. I mean, it's yeah. half half the area we're looking at, I think. Is but the it's the one you need. I mean, you can't go, we're, we're going to strike a deal and just buy the Papa Gino's one or right. the car wash and then find out years down the road we can't get the other ones. I mean, you have to go after the big parcel right now. And yeah, that's what's your right anchor. And I, and yeah, I that's that, your anchor. Yeah, I like I in what Ryan says again, show the financial, make, make the argument, that's the biggest part, but I also think that you start with an anchor and this, this stop and shop one makes so much sense. It's got all the area, the land area to do it. Um, and then if it's successful, then the other developers or developers and the landowners will see the advantages to selling and expanding on it. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, that's the, the idea of the anchor, you know, yeah. the, and we, it seems like somebody needs to show proof of concept. Somebody needs to do it first and do it right and show the community and the developers what could be done there. And with so many things outside our control, it seems like we have to find a thing that we can control. And if, if it's a fiscally positive transaction for us, then um, that's the kind of risk that we'd have to take. But looking up and down that street, there's few examples of progress being made. And if we wait around to refer a developer to do it, we're going we're to be waiting around forever. So that, that we have to find, and if it's not that location, maybe we start with a smaller project somewhere else on Main Street that we can beautify and bring people to and, and you know uh, try to show off the kind of values we're trying to achieve with a project like this, but we have to find something that we can control, uh, otherwise I... Well, it's multifaceted too, because the argument we talked about uh, on, the, on the, call it the traffic study last week, I mean, that, that has the opportunity to really transform 28, mm -hmm. and that has its own triggers and, and, uh, and what it, the, the possibilities that it will bring with it, so it's, it's, it's a separate thing, but all of this has to work together. I'm not opposed to seeing the, uh, the uh, community center over dip switch. I think it makes a lot of sense personally to me. You know, it's a natural spot. I think there's a lot of unused space there. I'm not sure <coughs> that garage over there is really necessary or couldn't be relocated mm -hmm. for what its uses. I'm, 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 so I don't want to get into that, you know, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. I just was saying, like, yeah. I see all of these can be broken up a little yeah. bit as yeah. different types of projects. Um, I see the advantages, and I just I have an open mind to it. But yeah. I do I do like the anchor idea. And um, Ryan said something to me at the beginning of the meeting or prior to the meeting that you know with the stop and shop as we were talking about stop and shop, and it's almost like Danielle, if if our TM almost could reach out, be the one actually literally making that call and trying to let you know I'm the, I'm I'm trying to get somebody, and we almost have to elevate it to that level, and that's within the town infrastructure and then aside from that if anybody knows anyone in the organization or the real estate groups that they deal with i used to know them i don't really now but is atlantic still Do that's still sign yeah that? see that's it, it, that's who i dealt with atlantic yeah. before but i don't i don't there's, know i don't know how much well there's on that property problem the current stop and shop is uh, uh it was sold to another developer who i do have contact information okay. for but i mean i don't know I, I guess I could reach out to them and see yeah. because I mean it's not the same stuff, but it's not the same property. Yeah. And they rent the stuff. 
but I, I couldn't. I would think the RK centers people too. Would, yeah. They I, they have to be working with Stop and Shop and their other properties. So. Yeah. Right, right. Just the head of real estate. Yeah, I know. So that's what we have to elevate it. The, the, the hold is just terrible. You can't be making good money off job yeah. lots. Yeah. No, it's one third of the <laughs> of the square footage. It's almost a proposition. Well, they got the, right that, they have so the gas station. Yeah, it's it's I don't they, even they know if it's one third. They kept the gas station with job lots being in there. Yeah, there is no way that's oh, yeah. making that. That's, that's one of the big things there. Was the gas station keep the gas station? And their and their interest is not to have competition on on groceries. I mean, that's right. kind of it, as long as you satisfy that, I think yeah. they'll come to the table. Do you want me to try to reach out again? In, you know, in terms of making some other contacts and trying to get it to that yeah, we way. I mean, I, to stop and drop, yeah. 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 In yeah. terms of what we have, and, and potentially sharing some of the concepts we've already talked about. I mean, is that absolutely okay? Yeah, I can do that. Smart. I'm <laughs> yes, and if anyone has any any contacts, any leads, yeah. just let me know. Any Scooby I'll snacks. call anyone, I just need to know. <coughs> yeah. Have you like spray paint your uh, phone number on the on the uh, glass uh, facade and uh, you know, Yeah, you know, the Skywriter, you know, one of the planes just <laughs> call me. I was having well, so the, well, so where do we go first now? I mean, we, so we, we're in five different directions. So again, I'll repeat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you should create a slideshow of things that you guys think is the right thing to do. And you get that slideshow together, you go to Stop and Shop. Whatever sequence you want to go in. But get your, get your slideshow together. And you got to, you know, it's, it's good to think about what the Facility Master Plan Committee might reach. And it's good to think about what the select board might be thinking to. But you should be thinking about what makes the most sense considering all the dynamics that are going on from your point of view. That's your charge. And you're trying to put a community together with infrastructure. And uh, and I'm just and I'll share with you when I know it, the UMass gerontology slides, maybe that'll help you. I'll come in and I'll have them come in and talk to you about what's going on. But you're really trying to plan for this demographic change. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to build an infrastructure that will keep people in town not having to leave. That's I mean, I think we can all agree that's what's going on. And so slides, you know, I think slides is a good way to get your story together. And, uh, you know, and I think that would be the first step. I'm just curious on the thought process. So you want the town to buy a stop and shop? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, well, I don't think um, probably none of us can actually afford it. So, <laughs> but yeah, the idea was to, the idea is to maybe, is to, well, that Ryan had was to, um, buy that property and build a town hall there and sell this property to pay for it. Sell this well, property. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's that mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a if it's a um, it's probably not an even swap, but there's probably right. there's probably a million that would have to come up the town would have to come up with. I mean I just keep having Andrew Schultz ringing in my brain. <laughs> if I own stop and shop and you're coming to me, my price is going up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. They've been sitting on a half-empty building for yeah. some years. They just don't want market baskets. I know, but they're not market baskets. Market <laughs> basket. That's all. Like, they yes. want to stop losing money. I mean, they're, yeah. they're they holding could, on they to a part of Yeah, I think there's a lot of unknowns that, that would incentivize them. They, would, they yeah. wouldn't get our yeah. the grocery business. So, okay, so let's right. let's let's become a uh, landlord. Let me see if I can get the thought process. I agree, though. Let me see if I can put this together some kind of order. Got to be a rosier picture, you know. So I think the order to this is going to be Rich, let's, we'll put, get together, we'll put some kind of a, we'll put a presentation together of some kind. We'll all work together as best we can to get something together. And we'll just review it real quick. We'll go to the Board of Selectmen, pitch the whole process as, as a concept, okay? Like I said. Yes. As a concept. And see what, what level of support we get. We'll invite, we should invite the Facilities Master Plan Committee. Because, because we already know they're probably not in favor of some of what we want to do, but Perhaps if they see the whole picture, there may be a little bit of wavering there. So, so, and then once we get past that, if we, if it looks like we have at least some level of support, then we could take it to the stop and shop and, and see, see if they, um, if they maybe, you know, because because Ryan's right, they they've been losing money for for years now, and they may they may want to be part of the plan. 
Well, that was, that, I don't that know was the original else, idea. That was our original idea. Yeah, the original idea, idea was a square. What else they have for investments? I mean, I've yeah. never really looked into them. Uh, you know, you might find out that they actually own. They own uh, that property. I know, but they, oh. they also own other types of things, like a farmer's market type place. They, oh, might, oh. they might already have that in their portfolio, so whereas they yeah. would know that this is how to make this successful and be part of the plan. Yeah, so, so even so a small so store that okay, they would, you know, have small takeouts and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That so, deal. so how does that? At least in the short term, there's a plan. Yeah. Everybody good with that's that? Fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's follow that. And then, and again, because I think we've well, one of the things we did tonight, we identified a bunch of things, and one of them is that we really need a big piece of property because we're not getting response from the other people. If we can work something out, or we can get the big piece of property to either work with us or get it. I think then we get everybody's attention. So, and the reason, one re couple reasons to have an outside consultant. One is it shows the seriousness of purpose if you have the outside consultant doing a presentation. Another is after the presentation, I'm going home to Cambridge. Yeah. So there's yeah. nothing personal here. It's yeah. purely professional. Right. My right. kid didn't beat up your kid, and your kid didn't <laughs> beat up my right, kid. Right. And there's yes. no none of that stuff. Yeah. So we sometimes we can facilitate dialogues. Yeah. We're really the town at the end of the evening. So right. so anyway, figure out how you well, we also can use there's, us. There's also because the Hefline property is already indicated that they. This stop shop property touches the Heffron property. Yeah. So now we would have actually a physical connection to a good part of it, but we already have agreement from one person. If we can get if we can get that, I think we, we can show that, that we control a big enough piece of property to begin to actually put that project together. Yeah. So I think that's the so that's the plan. Yeah. Okay? Daniel. Okay. Get in contact with you. Sure. In terms of the slideshow, we're, we're talking about all of the various concepts that we had talked about. Like the David had put together a slideshow for us a number of months ago well, that um, had the different ones. Is that? Um, I think but we, we kind of we kind of lit on one, right? Is that it's the like, one we're still? We kind of lit on one. We kind of landed on one concept, one basic design concept. I think it if we just you know rather and I think we need to keep it simple. Stay with one. And Focus on the fact that it's conceptual. There you go. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. That was oriented that towards meeting the needs of a developer. So some of the, you could say, the really exciting ideas like the market hall got left behind because, like, who's going to pay for it? I think we should put that. I think we should take that. I want that picture in the pre, in the presentation. I want it in there because I want them to see that that there's some excitement there. That there's a possibility yeah. that somebody else did this and it worked. Yeah. Yeah, so we can balance. I mean, I think yeah. that the point where this is at is there are different directions that can go. There's the financial reality, making developers happy, but this is really for the town. Here are exciting ideas and start talking about how to make this happen. I mean, yeah. the bottom line is some, somebody has to pay for everything. Yeah. But that's that's the question that's up in the air. Well, I think even the, the even bigger question is what is this what is this town what is this town gonna do? Are we you know, we're just, you know, We've been talking about doing something on 28 to do something for this town for as long as I've been, and before I was on this board. One of the first years I was on this board, we had a consultant that came in and, and oh, tried to sell us. All the, all the little. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to sell us, a, you know, what was the Cape Town? Then? We tried to, uh, they tried to sell us a, on, 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 on um, revamping this to look like one of the little towns down the Cape there. So Edgar Town. Yeah, so much. They try to make it look like mm -hmm. the monster. Like, it's the, the, that, that was the guy, the guy that designed Edgar Town, so we tried to make North Reading into Edgar Town. And um, I mean, spent a, lot, a fair amount of money on that. And it worked. Away with it. <laughs> well, you <laughs> <get those laughs> <overly interesting stuff. laughs> Have you ever been to Walmart and Edgar Town? <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I know. So we can give you a report, and in 2032, someone will say, <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> this is why did we do this? Yeah. Why don't we? But that's not the point, right? Yeah. Uh, 2022 is the point, not 2032. Right. So anyway. I, I guess I just want to be clear about the slideshow. I, <laughs> I'm, I, I mean, I know that you've prepared slideshows that were very extensive and included a lot of different concepts and different photos of different types of things. And I'm, is that is that the presentation that we're thinking of? Or is it 
a scaled back version of that? Am I taking the presentation and editing what you guys have done? Like, I don't know quite how if, this if works. If you can tell us who the audience is and what you want to accomplish, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll edit it. Just, just, you know. Well, initially, well, what is the story? Then? It's the story. It's yeah, the story. This is a part of the story. Yeah. yeah. Initially, initially, what well, all would, would would you know you, you know we do have to go back to the basics, like Chris said. We're gonna we, we need to do, do the concept. We need to show the concept and what's possible, and then and show, then show the, the what the concept concept you came yeah, up, yeah, the yeah, final yeah. concept you came yeah. up with, yeah. I believe, yeah. and and add in that. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Warren. Yeah, no, go. No, I. I yeah, but but you know, Warren's that large building that would be you know the the offices and the food court downstairs, which is 12 months a year, because a food court outside here yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's only good for three or four months. Three or four months. We've and already found year, that and out. This year only three. Yeah. <laughs> we found that out because of COVID, and, yeah. and people you know they could not have places in the wintertime and it rains and they can't go outside in the rain unless you got a tent you know and the, the, the service get wet because they're running back and forth and they don't want to do it it's just so if it's all under one roof yeah. with some small businesses on like maybe the second floor yeah. that would that concept as as the the kind and of again the, it's, it's not we're not saying we're going to do it we're just saying here's one of the things that you can do when you build a development like this that's all yeah i'm yeah. sure in Fano hall or or yeah. Italy. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, is that, that, that yeah, kind of exactly. thing. That, yeah, that kind exactly. of thing. That, that kind of exactly. Thing. But so you use your concept you came up with for the property and add this on into the that back kind of area. Yeah. But you don't have to don't have to go into but detail. Just, just, the just, just simple. Just simple. Just just <coughs> just a flash. It's a possibility this one. But and, and you know, I think Rich got the idea. I, I actually know how to do this. So okay. Yeah, and we're working an outline. We're working an outline together. All right. And we'll take it from top to the bottom. And this is a part of the story. Um, yeah. But it's not the entire story. No. Yeah, I'll help out too. Because if, if you don't, if you just if you focus on the project itself, it's never going to sell. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Because right. 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 there's a bigger there's a bigger story here about the community, yeah. and that's the bigger story. Because if you don't get that, it's well, not I think story. my point is that over these over this last pretty much close to 30 years now that I've been doing this. The, we have hired somebody to do this for us three or four times and spent large sums of money and really not had. The, the majority of the improvements that have been done on Route 28 right now were done by this board, you know, being- Forcing. Yeah, forcing people to build something that was better looking than what they wanted, yeah, okay? Put us ugly box in there. That's okay. right, that's right. So that's, I mean, and, and I mean, Mrs. Romeo was a big part of that. Uh, <laughs> she sure was. <laughs> I Firestone. Was at, I was she, at those meetings. <laughs> she yeah. made sure that, that, that some, yeah. whatever was done looked good, you yeah, know? Always, I mean, always had to look good, and we, stay and we within had, the zone. Right from the very beginning, people like Rick, Rick, Rick Askinaz and all the people that came before us, they all, worked hard to try to make this, this town look better. And, and, and that's where most the success has come from, but not from, we haven't really gotten anything from the, all these, um, the people that we've hired to, to, they haven't, I don't think they ever understood the town, you know. I and you and I will have to say that I, we were impressed with you day one because you did seem to understand the town. So I feel a whole lot better about this than, than, than for some of the stuff we've been doing in the past. So so let's so let's do it. But we do need more input on the specifics of the town, and I think it's less the specifics of like exactly the market hall, and more the specifics of what are the unmet needs. What are people yearning for? You, you know, and well, not we not, not, not ask that question. That out we, know, we asked yeah. that question, yeah. and we asked that question in the in, in in the surveys that we've done. We've asked it a number of times in the surveys, and they do they would like to have. I guarantee if you pitch, if you put this concept of, of this indoor marketplace in front of them, they would say, yeah, that would be fun. Then on a rainy Saturday or on a Sunday afternoon, that would be fun. We'd love to have that place. But you could show them a store with a, with a, uh, with a, with a boutique of some kind and, 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 some, you know, and some small percentage would say, yeah, I'd like to go there. They'd say, no, I'm never going there. 
But you put up that, I think you put that market hall there, whatever you want to call it. I think that everybody would say, there's got to be something in there for me. I'll, I'll, I'll go there. So, so that, that's the reason that I thought that concept would be... Would well, you, you, I think everyone has the presentations we've done. I, I think I can yeah. send them again. It might make sense to go back because, like, oh, my God, that was, like, yeah. how, uh, you know, months and months and months ago. Go back and take a look at what we've said. And you may yeah. say, no, 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 what I'm thinking of is missing. But, but I, I, think, I think the concept that we picked... The, the, build, the concept that we picked of the buildings, while it wasn't perfect, I think it represented a consensus among us of yeah. what was yeah. the best of what you would put together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think we stick with that. Let's not let's not mess with that. We're okay with that. And you can bubble out that community center and just put a couple of thought bubbles with sure. town hall or yeah. Uh, yeah. food yeah. hall. Right. Right. That right. piece right. could be yeah. so, so, so I don't want to I don't want to go back and look at seven different per, uh, concepts now because we really would put some time yeah. into that and I do think that the concept that we picked is was among us anyway pretty That's much an acceptable nice. concept so yeah and are you someone we should be talking to we, we should be working together right? yeah you should all be working together yeah. okay and, and i'm happy to do that and maybe do you you want to be the facilitator in terms of you know there needs to be a core working group that includes right. our office and includes the town and yeah. it, you know um so happy to work with you, happy to work with you, and let's figure out what we want to accomplish. And what hey, Ryan, you said you could help out, too. Yeah, I'm glad to work with that. Okay. Great. Should I, why don't I email the four of us together tomorrow, okay. and um, I, and maybe we can just get the ball rolling on the presentation part. Yeah, okay. I didn't understand. I'll, I'll email the four of us tomorrow, and yeah. we can get the ball rolling on the cool. presentation. Great. Yeah, and I think we'll uh, and then uh, let's let's move forward. And it's not going to be elaborate. It's not going to be two hour long. It's going to be it's going to be straightforward, and it's going to be a concept. And then and we'll and then if we can get some support for the concept from everybody, right. then we can move forward. Yep. Okay. That's the plan. Perfect. Okay. Good job. Okay. So until tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Thank you very so much. So now I get to go home to Cambridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank Thank you you. Thank you. I want you to. Thank you. Is that, your, is that your phone? Oh, yes. <laughs> I do want. I do want to tell you that we do. Uh, that we do. I think we all really appreciate the effort you put into this. Real seriously, you have really taken it to heart. And I think you've understood us better than yeah, I think anybody we've ever worked with. So, so I do want to thank well, you good. very much for that. But need to understand you even better, and even more important, you need to understand yourself. I mean, getting clarity. Not individually. I think, on the I, think we'll work. I think we're getting there. We're You're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. The share Thank you. It just doesn't work. Even though like, the public links aren't working. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you, well, you have our link, you can't get I'm it. I'm sitting at the nope. terms of share, that's what happens with ShareFile. It goes down all the time. This has actually not happened to me before with ShareFile, but I know it's happened to you. Yeah, it's, I can't and it's kind of that's why I always say why are we use why are we using what we were using because we never had that problem. The only time we had that problem is when we didn't have Wi-Fi. It was working for me. Refresh and now it's not. <laughs> it's not that expensive. I download a lot of the files and then yeah, well it's like hundred bucks. Hey, okay, we can have uh, so two hundundred in the pot. See, he didn't lose his they, connection. They, also they submitted a plan that shows both the like handicapped parking spaces. Sure, I can't turn. I can't turn my planes. Unfortunately, I documents are fine. Yeah, it'll just take. Well, I kind of oh yeah, you're not in anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I kind of loaded everything ahead of time before I came. It doesn't. It didn't. Doesn't hold it. You want to look at the paper? Doesn't hold it. I've never had it. I've never had it. I've never had it. We've looked at papers and straight out of here. Thanks for that one. Those are the old days. I think just have them right along this one. There's only one set. I'm sorry. This is the endorsement. I already saw that they put my. Handicap they spot. put the handicap spot in, so I'm, I actually I reviewed these before. That He's was driving the change without GPS right now. Huh? He's driving without GPS right now. Yeah, do you have a bigger set? <laughs> yeah. That's See? the only set I That's have. That's the best one you have. Did you ask me if I had a bigger set? That hasn't to us yet. I, don't. I hate share files. I asked them for a smaller <laughs> set, believe me. Um, I, I hate the full size. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah. it's a full size. That's why I couldn't put it in. This is this is this is this size. Yeah. To scan it like that way. Yeah. Well, we'll have to sign it at some point, but we'll get a review on You guys looked at it? You want to come look over our shoulders? Yeah, yeah you know, not, not to be pushy or anything, but.
looked at them before. So the, the so, what's the, what's so my biggest problem with this was that extra handicapped parking place. They hadn't marked it out at right. all. Now they have the last one. I, I did. I did review so that. I'll go to that just to show. Yeah, that right on the first sheet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's that's the existing. There it is. So you got the you got the okay. van pickup. That's the van space, right? For if you're driving a van, you can get your ramp up and you can get out. And that's that's the second one. They they really didn't do this one. And I'd rather have a handicap space next to that than a car because they always park in the in the wrong place, anyways. So I think I think that's perfect. Works for me. And I think everything else they had the five in the front and every one of those. Uh, not every one of them. But, uh, that looks good. Yeah, they look, they look fine. They look, yeah. So, it was, you can, yeah. My can was right. Oh, yeah, it's not really in anyways. I, keep, I kept going in and kept saying we don't have a connection. Yeah. Even though and Dan Danielle can't get on either because she's on the, co on the uh, employee email, uh, Wi-Fi. Which we're not employees; they won't give us. It doesn't even work on the employee Wi-Fi. Right yeah, now, no, so. no, that's what I was saying. So the better Wi-Fi is what Danielle has. <coughs> She's no, no, I can't on. even Wi-Fi stop. Huh? Wi-Fi stop. They're you know, looking down at us. Yeah. With our inferior Wi-Fi. Connection is lost. All right, we're out. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can sign these off, right, Warren? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You want to sign? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, uh, Let's take them out to a table. You want to make a motion first? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have the motions yeah. on paper? Yeah. I see it. I see oh, it. Yeah. I see it. I see it. Yeah. 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 Yes. Oh. Yeah. He yeah. already has it. He has it. Just wait on Dave. Wait on Dave. I've been the clerk so often recently that it's hard to. Well, that's disappointing to lose all my info here. Just <laughs> sucks. <laughs> Had it the whole time for that discussion until the last yeah, minute. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And suddenly it just went zoop, gone. Yeah. Now I don't have an agenda. Oh, Do we have a printed right. agenda? Yeah, this one out there. No, no there there isn't. <laughs> oh. Well, well, Debbie has one. I have one. Let's she has one for you, Warren. All right. Um, I didn't make copies tonight. Okay. Nobody ever takes them, so I always end up throwing them away. There you go. Oh, maybe I can call that from the town hall Oh, there's minutes still. Oh, thank you very much. Were there any minutes? 15th and 29th, minutes. Right? Yeah, two sets. Okay. The 29th and the... Oh, right. I'm going to pull up our agenda from the town hall there. You can get that from the, the, the town hall website, because you can PDF that one, right? <coughs> Yeah, this is ridiculous. All right. Um, All right, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, Mr. Clark. I move the Community Planning Commission vote to endorse the plan entitled GMP Warehouse Master Plan, 200 River Park, North Reading, Massachusetts, dated April 5th, 2021, revised November 23rd, 2020. All right. Okay. Drawn by BSC Group, subject to the terms and conditions of the Certificate of Conditional Approval, dated June 1st, 2021. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The record show five in favor, no opposed. Is that right? The plans are dated April 5th, 2020. Well, revised in 2020. Yeah, well, yeah. Does that, that make sense? sense too? Uh, <coughs> uh, well, you know, I was doing a minute to revise. Is there a 2020? Go ahead. I can hear your name from up there. Before you did? Oh, yeah. Just me? Ryan's got a read backwards, but I don't have to read it. Still counts. Yeah. Still legal. Yeah. April is when they redid it, I guess, for the guys. Same as I just said about the opposite.
he's already signed. Everybody signed except for you, and there's two more. Seconds. Any further discussion? If you none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Rick and no. Five in favor, no opposed. Mr. Cap. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes dated June 29th, 2021. Second. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Dave. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If you none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Not the record show five in favor, no opposed. Okay, um, so I think what I would like to do is quickly talk about the fence required for the swimming pool. I like that, what he came up with, was very short, 
sweet. It was a one line change, right? Mm -hmm. And it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, I, I don't know what the process is because it's not a zoning bylaw, it's a general bylaw. I'm sure we can give an opinion, but it wouldn't be the normal like public hearing process that we would have for zoning, mm -hmm. but. Does it have to go to the, the select board have to carry this out, or? I don't know, I mean, I think it's town meeting, but I, I'm still finding out what the process okay. is right. to change. So essentially you put that in there just for us to read and for us to opine on it? Yeah, I mean, we had talked about it before, I think when Jerry was here, he brought right. it up. Yeah. And so I just wanted to, just as a follow-up, um, just because he said it to me, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know if anyone had an opinion on it now, or. Yeah, it I, is I code asked though, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, what, what he's inserted is the code, and there's no provision in the Massachusetts code right now for um, an automatic enclosure or a cover to, to allow you to get rid of a fence. So that, I think that's what his point was, is he's... He's having trouble with that. People well, push, they're pushing back on him. It, and, and just because it's not in the bylaw, but yet it's in the code? You know, yeah, because, because the bylaw says that you can have the uh, yeah, because they're new offense. Our bylaw says yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's the issue. I don't know, so so he needs why not just eliminate that? Well, he says that it it's that the the code doesn't allow him to that the code does say that you can eliminate your fence if you oh, have the That's yeah. what Jerry said. So that's yeah, so why what he, we, what he wants to do is the national local. code says doesn't say that. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It, it's not required by the national code, but he wants to make it a bylaw here. So, so, so um, as in, IRC doesn't allow it, but Mass Code is that what you say? Mass Building Code does allow you to use the automatic covers yes, and all. That, that is correct. Yes. And so we'd have a town yeah, only carve out. I should have looked that up more. Pardon? So we'd have a town only carve out for that. Same. No, I don't think. No, it's not. It wouldn't be a town only. Um, when it comes to when it comes to laws like this and things like this, the, the towns have towns have home rule, so they do have the ability to make something a, a bylaw that's stricter than the state code, but not less, less stricter than the state code. So, you so undercut the state unless you go to the state and ask them to, to undercut it. Well, well, we, we talked about it that last right, meeting. Right, I, mean, no, I, I, I applaud it. I, I mean, I think Jerry made so much sense. You know, it, there's there's obviously a conflict. Um, and I thought it was the opposite, so I apologize. Um, but whatever, I mean, whatever. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I follow I, Jerry. I if Jerry would have thought to make that change if he thought that the state supported his position. Right. He could he could then take him to court. That's right. right. He put his finger on that line in front of a judge, and he'd right, win every time. Right. So that's yeah, the every issue. Time. So Danielle, you're going to find out how we go about making this uh, gospel. Yeah, I can I can look into it. It's probably not going to be initiated. Do you understand what though. we're talking about? How come? Listen, it's it's yeah. the pool enclosures. Yeah. Anything deeper than 24 inches that has water in it for more than 24 hours, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, needs to have a four foot enclosure yeah. around it. And a gate. Right. But there is something in the mass code that allows them to have an automatic cover that covers the pool when it's not being used and you can walk across it 200 pounds. Well, we get a lot of people that weigh more than 200 pounds now. The code as it's written right now does say it has to have a gate that can be locked when the pool is not in use. So it's the in use thing, a not in use thing that allows the automatic cover to take the place of the fence according to the state. Yeah. So it's in use or not in use. And so what he wants to do is he, he says, I don't care if it's in use or not, I want a fence all the way, all the, yeah. all the time around it. Because um, picture, if the oh. if the cover is open, a young child could just walk right in. Well, with, walk if right there's in no fence, in. and just walk right in, right. fall right in. Well, then I mean, there'd be two violations yeah. there, though. One of them would be that if the pool is not in use and there's nobody there, the the gate is supposed to be locked. No, no, then, there's no there's no fence around it with the cover. With the event of the cover, there is no yeah. fence yeah. around the cover. Yeah. The in use part is. Yeah, how yeah. much does that That's get? I wish we could rate this, but just <laughs> that would be so well, I read through it. It's the in-use thing that that you know. Yeah, it it, yeah, it, it, it makes, makes sense. sense. Somebody it makes who lives sense. to go to the bathroom. In 1973, we put this in there, and yeah. there was a little thing bottom. that they were able to go around yeah. by having this cover on. Okay, so we're not. There's no action for us tonight. Um, is that a, is that a other than we uh, we agree Tom with it? kind of thing though. Yeah, she's working on that. But we're not sure who has to. But there's nothing um, in the interim that he can do. There's, there's nothing to help give him some teeth. I, mean, I don't know how much pushback. He mentioned one example. 
Well, and he's th some of the people have gone along with it, and some of the people have not. So yeah. what we're going to do is uh, Danielle's going to find out how it is that we make it gospel, and um, and then we'll we'll pursue that for him. Yeah. So he'll have some teeth in it. So. Did he consult town council at all? Not yet, I don't think. Yeah. I think he probably should do that as his next step because I don't really think it, I, it, I doubt it's going to be a CPC sponsored. I mean, unless you really feel strongly about it, you want it to be, but it doesn't seem like that. Maybe wants that's what I, I would like. Okay. I think opinion. essentially what he was doing here is to give, give it a sentence because basically we do the zoning. So he basically just wanted to give us an idea of what no. he wanted to see and then we'll see where Verify it goes. Huh? Sorry. I thought it was in. Oh, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I went, so where I get that out of the way, then we're all set with that. So accessory dwelling units discussion. So did everybody get a chance to read through Reading's bylaw there? Yes. Real quick. So it's pretty um, it's pretty good, but it does allow some things that I don't know if we're in favor of, oh, or, or I don't know if if I. Um, I mean, it'd be, it'd be interesting to know when Reading first put that accessory dwelling unit bylaw in place, whether they got any grief from some of the higher end houses or not. But, um, um, but th this allows for uh, for uh, detached. Yeah, Jerry's feedback to me was that he would not be in favor of that. He really pr would prefer that they just be within the primary structure with a limit of about. 700 to 900 square feet in size, okay. including, you know. Well, how about the uh, how about the part where it says that uh, up no more than three people, and they can they don't want them to be. I think they use the word casual acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or transient is the other word. That was yeah, right. like to correct things. When I used it, this as an example, first off, it's the neighboring town. And secondly, it's definitely different than North Reading. So when we can use it as Danielle's kind of closed the last meeting with. Um, as when a, we, as we a template? It. Yeah, I mean, it? you know, use yeah. it, but I agree with her when, she, <laughs> when Danielle said there's definitely some issues. I mean, well, how do you feel? it's not, it's not ours, so that's what how, the point. How does everybody feel about the, the uh, uh, transient or casual uh, part of it? In other I, words, so, so if it takes away so I'm not sure exactly how they how enforce it. Is that exactly. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I mean, how do you? That's just crazy. I mean, it should just be more about dimensional and safety and you know. I was concerned. But, about but I, isn't I, Jerry having uh, you with the 25? So how long <coughs> has Jerry been building inspector? A couple of years. Three years. Four years. So he says he said 25. You know that he's aware of that. Or ADUs during his time. Yeah. Um, that was what he told us on the 29th. Yeah. So whatever, 12 a year, not well. It's only if it's three years, it's even less. But are you trying <coughs> to make the case for don't bother making a law? No, no. I think he needs some help, and right now he's using a deed restriction, a modified deed restriction that he's okayed right. through state and. Are legal, I guess. Uh, the first version was a little restrictive. Yeah. No one would sign it. Right. And then the new one, it's a model right. or based on the one they use in Middleton, and people are signing it. So I think he should continue to do that, you know, because it's a long way until off. We get a, a well, I mean, it's until next yeah, spring, I, right? Yeah, I think he was more concerned about pools than this. Right. He wanted. He wants us to work on this. Right. But. Well, the safety pool, wise, the right? The pools important. keep them up at night. Yes, <laughs> it, yeah, these don't. No, I, I agree. So these, these just actually keep them very busy. <laughs> as right. It sounds like yes. in letter yeah. writing campaigns and all this kind of stuff, and working with legal. So you know, the big thing about this that I didn't like was was the garages they turn into units. Yeah, but that's detached, and we don't want to do detached. Right. Exactly. If you, right. You stay away from that because they're, you know, we have garages that are ten feet up the property. That's what we talked about. You know, and he, he had think, that same issue. And I think <coughs> if you read in that bylaw, it's okay as long as it's more than five feet of the property line. Right, right. Yeah. right. The bylaw says five feet yeah. of the property line. Right, for them. The Reading one. Right. Yeah. But that's yeah. but that's because it's a whole different town. Yeah, lots, lots of different sizes. Right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of small. So the, very small the problem ones. is, too, is we need to identify, is, say we go with only a um, attached, you know, apartments and Attach the main dwelling. Inside I the main think, dwelling. Yeah, what they call Inside it. What they call it. They called it. Um, um, well, I got it here now. They came up. You can get on, but you have to go on. 
you have to get on. I have it printed out. So you, you're talking about the apartments that are attached. Well, well, well no, the, only, the, only, the only ones that I think that he would be in favor of was that, or that we may want to be in favor of uh, would be the ones that are, uh, that are inside an existing structure. Right. Right. The existing, the main structure, I think they call it. And that would be a, you know, walk before you run the principal type dwelling. of approach in ADUs and then yeah. try, it's almost like a pilot. Yeah. And then see how people and see how it works. And but they don't, if you're inside of a primary dwelling and you're not making any changes to it, there is no permit. It's, it's for you know, North it's Reading. By right. Yeah, for Reading, that's by right. By right. But see, here's the, we have to be by here's right. Here's the problem, too, though. And, and uh, again, I'm more for that than detached because I just think the detached brings a lots of problems with it. Yeah. And then it becomes a well, lot of I think we got, I think detached are off the table, but there are some but other But he's having some trouble with those. There. That's what he's he's saying. That's oh, yeah. Most of the ones he's dealing with are all detached. Yeah, I know. So I what are, I'm just getting at, and then. We get to the general discussion. Is we have the thing we want to do, which are the attached ones, and then we need to help Jerry out, which was the whole purpose of six twenty nine. He needs teeth on the Stop the on the other ones because there's no lane. Everything we have in our bylaws gives him no way to stop this, other than he's you know getting very creative with deeds and. Well, I think I think it has to. I think when we create this bylaw, it has to reference our our punitive fee schedule or whatever it is that, that we have because we do have it. A schedule of, of, of fines and so forth for yeah, put it on things. there. It's, it's like three hundred dollars so, a day. Yeah, well, well, it starts out smaller, but yeah, it starts out left. But I think um, it has to reference that in order for that to be in order for him to enforce that. So, hmm. in order for him to actually write I, the ticket, if you will. You know, they they've got these three things here. One was uh, within a primary dwelling, and that's by right. That's what Reading does. Yeah. Um, and then they have within an existing accessory building, no addition to gross floor area. So that's like special a garage. change in a garage or a pool house. That's a right. special permit though. That is a special permit. And then they have a new structure or addition to the gross floor area of an existing structure. And that's a special permit. Right. So the last one and the first one with the requirements, I, I don't have much problem with the other one. Because there's a special permit required, you know, I still have the issue about too close to the sideline. Yeah. You know, because it may violate some space, and, and those places can get noisy. Well, right. again, that, that, that we can modify that to right, 10 right. feet or whatever. Within the zone? Yeah. I mean, they, they do have the. They know that it will then go to the Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. Well, they yeah. do have this nice thing in here that you've got to stay within the setback. Yeah. From right. the main yeah, street, dimensional stuff. Yeah, right, front yeah, yard. Back from yeah. the main even road. if even if your part of your house is outside that or inside the setback, the new property has to be outside the setback. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. It has to conform. It can't not conform. Well, and then a except, and then a detached one can't be but have a street between it, a road between it, a driveway between it. Not sure why that is, but uh, uh, no, I thought that was okay. Off-street parking driveway. Yeah. They want you to have enough off-street parking for. Oh yeah. For the unit. I think that's that's a sure way to rile up your neighbors if you let people park out on right. the street. Right. Mm -hmm. See that one there. Existing street you may not be expanding, but if you've got a, a two-car garage with, with a second floor on it, you can put an accessory yeah. unit in there. Good thing. Yeah. But it has, and, and that can be the closeness to the, the furniture. Yeah, so, um, what were you looking for from us tonight, Danielle? Just to, just for us to review this and and, um, and see what we thought. Well, I think you guys had spotted it and and asked that I add, add it to the agenda so that we could yeah. go through it um, and start to talk about this as kind of our first step in looking. Oh, well, I think some of the basics that we've already kind of agreed on. Is we don't want any detached. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still not sure. That I you know, I was kidding a little bit about the transient and uh, casual, but uh, but only partly because that they put that in there for a reason, and and uh, the intent is is probably for family, right? They, but they right. I don't think they could say for family, so that's how they got around that mm -hmm. by putting that that in there, um, so that if you had a bad apple, 
you know, he's got, is that part of the accessory apartment stuff? That's not, that's 5.4.4. Oh, is that that's yeah. just it's on just that just like following section. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not, this is what she copied it for was this, not that. Oh, it ends. That, that's just, that's just a subparagraph. Well, it says you can rent out. Right, but I think it's, that it, it's it has, it's like, in a single family district, outdoor storage of seasonal stock of firewood. Why are we concerned with that? Yeah. It's the next section of the So it's the next section, which is 5.4.7. Yeah. Not that first, those first few lines there. Uh, gotcha. Five point four, point four, point five, point six. Don't have uh, are not um, have any bearing on five point four point seven. Follow me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. So sure. So sure. But I understand that this is this is renting a room, a single room, mm -hmm. and you just providing board all separate doors. To furnish room and board in the dwelling. Yeah, you can rent that someone else. Room only. Really so that's more like being an Airbnb. Like yeah. That's for Airbnb. Like that one. Yeah. yeah. And that so one. I don't like this that. down here, the restrictions yeah. here, shown as table set forth in section three point five point three point one and five point three point two. And I don't know if we got those tables. Yeah, this is, this is yeah that five four four. I think that's things also like halfway houses and right, right. You know, I think when they're saying transient people, is you can't be renting to a homeless person right. who's renting it on a week in, week out I basis. I don't think we got the tables. Five point three point three and five point three point four. It's referenced here oh, through the restrictions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know what their restrictions are that they're referencing. Um, Right, okay. Accessory apartments may be allowed as shown in the table set for in sections 5.3.1 and 5.3.2 and subject to the applicable performance standards set forth below. And we've got the below, those are the pictures. So we just don't have that table. Um, I'm looking, I don't know if you can pull it up. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, what was the number of the table? Five. Five. Door. Five point three point one and two. I don't know, I can't, um, which one are you looking at? Oh, Chris. It's on, uh, page 28. Oh, it's their, it's their table of uses. Yeah, it's page 28. Oh, that's, that's not the, that's not the, uh, versus like. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's a table of uses. Okay. Yeah. I have one. Uh, I was again under the original. Oh, yeah, here we go. A detached accessory apartment associated with single family. Oh, it just say, it says whether you need a special permit or not. It's not. That's all being I get here, and then I try to get in from here. Yeah, that's what it's not. That's what they need for me to go to. Living area as opposed so it's under accessory uses, floor, so it's like, like special, special permit, not allowed. So oh, that's okay. Right. The right. Oh, and it is on. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know how relevant that is for us, but. Well, not right now, it's not relevant. Yeah. Later on, it will be. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, then I'll, I'm, in, I'm in, in it now. So, so could you put your right to just make that here? Yeah. Well, I think the second one takes care of that. The principal way you get your dwelling is under the That's right there. It's all in the term. It's a password in the definition. I think you're going to be in the garage as an accessory. It's a matter of password. For share file, or maybe the. Yeah. The. A lot of times over them are living in the town space. So that's all I do. I do that too. That's part of my house. Yeah. Well, exactly. Except when you're downstairs, you know, upstairs from the day because it's the second floor. You don't count it in your square footage when yeah. you mark your house, right? Yeah. Uh, it's all on the assessment. Right. I just put, I just did before this, the North Reading Shape file, that's all. Then it came up. Then, yeah. Um, I'll have to get, I can't get back into Shape file, so it's just North Reading Mass, North Reading MA. It's not on the town website either because it's I can't get into share file. So you mean the public posting of the I'm in, files? I'm in the share file now. You can get back. Oh, can you get in? Try it. Okay. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, so I got in. Got in. So Warren, do you want to um, do you want a copy of that? 
Uh, you mean the planning yeah, department that's page? That's the document. She, uh, you can't get in the share file at all. Uh, hang on. It's under historicwritingma.gov. Uh, I read that. Slash community dash planning. And then you have to click on meeting materials. No, he can get. Oh, um, what are, what's the problem? But he, he's trying to sign into share file. Oh, yeah. I don't know that password. I yeah, so I, I've got mine logged in here because it's saved. I, I don't know what you guys are supposed so to do. It's, it is my email, you know? and then there's a password for it. Or I'm getting by doing nothing. I, I don't know the password, but you can also get in on our, on our website. I mean, yeah, I, yeah the good suggestion over here to avoid talking about passwords. Well, yeah, like, yeah. Like, well, we don't know any. <laughs> yeah. We don't know them anyway, but thank you. All right. Take so, that commercial. Dial in if you know where we're going to take that commercial. Thank you. Mom. So just to, uh, just, to, just to get us moving in, in some direction here, um, basically what we, we, we agree with to, to some extent that we just don't want to do the cash structures, and um, we would probably want to modify the setbacks. And um, I really like the idea of building a detached that I can put my... Uh, uh, Mother-in-law and father-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little uh, thinking practical here. Well, no, I live in a tent, so my my <laughs> ADU is another tent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Warren. You said no detached. No, I'm sorry. What was that with the last two? Well, uh, no detached. Mm -hmm. in, in to uh, we want to perhaps increase the setback. Mm -hmm. uh, this, you know, the setback off the property line um, to at least 10 feet because I think that's what most of the but what would that, well, if, it's, no, you, if it's in the existing structure, already, why would you modify the setbacks? If they, because if they try to expand the existing attached. structure. Oh, that would be for an addition, though. That would be an, an addition. addition. And that they would be still, existing. wouldn't they still have to meet, I would house, say meet they, the house, they still have to meet 25, 25, yeah. 40, and 50, right? Yeah. I think they should meet the setbacks. Well, I mean, I think the, the concept here was that if they were going <coughs> to work people within an existing structure and bump it out, that they may be allowed to bump it up a little more if they were if it was going to be an ADU. But well, since it's still a primary residence, it, then it would still have to conform to the regular the right. dwelling versus, um, say, accessory, which is a right. garage at five feet. So we're not doing that. We're doing the dwelling. So I don't I don't think you'd even have to change you it. Do it even if you do a renovation to the dwelling, they increase so the by, It's by the same exact the rules. Yeah, just getting, if you were doing a renovation. By right. getting rid of the detached uh, ADU, we, we eliminate the need for any of those setbacks. Is what you're saying? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, because yeah. you're just using regular yeah. setbacks. And, and there is they they do have a, a a limit on how much you can increase your dwelling for. Okay, that. Well, we we uh, we talk, they, they have a thousand. They say a thousand square feet of it can be at ADU or something in there. Jerry was suggesting between seven hundred and nine hundred square feet would be the preference. Yeah. Oh. Within the existing. It says an accessory apartment shall have a gross floor area not to exceed the lesser of one thousand square feet or one third of the gross floor area of the principal single family dwelling on the lot. Exclusive of any garage, unfinished basement, shed, or any or other accessory structure thereon. So the third of the living space, basically. Yeah. So if, if you have a thirty, if for reading, if you have a thirty-five hundred square foot house without a, or and you have a finished basement, right? You can have a third of that could be limited to a thousand. Though, so be a thousand. Yeah, they can. You can only limit it to a thousand. They, they can only have a thousand, even though they have thirty-five hundred, which would be a third of that. Right. Yeah. And, and notice, just what Ryan and I had noticed, too, the the second condition was for, um, call it an attached accessory um, unit, which would be a garage, right. would, would then be allowed, this is under there, so whether we do that or not, but is allowed, so you can convert a garage that's attached to your house. Right. Uh, that is not considered, not, not tax-wise it's different, but it, it, it's not considered part of the dwelling square footage that you just mentioned, that calculation. Right, so then you got to come up with a square footage right. for the dwelling. So, yeah, but then it would become, so it does have to still conform to that same right. square footage requirement, but then, because a lot of people have a garage and then they have living, uh, a living room or a space okay. above it. Uh, so it would only be the garage. <laughs> I think most homes, that's not going to be an issue, right? I got it. 
Because that's like, what, maybe 500 square feet? Yeah. And so a third, that would be The only problem there is you, you just hope they can people. provide the off-street yeah. parking because you, you, you know, that's, the that's the whole trick is they got to, they got to, you know, what are we get, what are we going to require for off-street parking for the accessory unit? One or two? Well, yeah, how do you regulate that? Yeah, if it's two, if, if it's a one bedroom, and I mean, well, wait a minute. Maybe maybe we just have to. Maybe it just has to be off street parking. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't yeah. matter how many spaces yeah, there sufficient, are. But sufficient, sufficient off street yeah, parking. Yeah, you know, they, 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 you know, they could already have. Um, they could have a fifty foot driveway. Yeah, could, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. So if we just so what fall with. See, Rich. Take these, Rich. Thank you, Rich, very much for your input. Thank tonight. you. So, was your tease on the back end of that? So what? Uh, so they end up with six cars and four spots, and there's always two cars in the street. How do you go back to them? Once yeah, you got to do something. That's that's kind of what I'm I'm thinking of. Right. Well, so well, uh, the next person who moves in has four four kids. Four kids. They kids. Car, yeah. They get and then they rent it to somebody, and it's a married couple that need two cars. Yeah. Well, and as long as they provide off street parking. But what Ryan said, if there's no teeth in the bylaw, or or in the zoning. How do you get back to them if, if in the future it gets? I well, I mean know. the same way you would do with anything else. I mean, if there's if there's people if they're parking on the street, call the cops and say, listen, you know, they're parking on the street, they're not supposed to. Be. Is there overnight parking in North Reading? There is from April the fifteenth to October fifteenth. Yeah, not when it snows though. So I mean, there's a more any vehicles have to be parked in someone's driveway, right? I mean, that's just kind of how like, nobody can own a car in North Reading if there isn't a permanent place to park it off the street, right? You're supposed to be right. theoretically, yeah. But they there are. I don't know. I mean, you know, if they find some place to park when it snows. Yeah, they use a neighbor's driveway or something like that. But you know, we have people park on the street in the winter time too during the day, yeah. not at night. Yeah. They find a place to park. Well, I think well, you know, I, well, I, rather than try to figure out how many cars we should allow, I think we just should do what Reading did and say, off-street parking has to be provided. Right. We can maybe look into um, this their language or other towns to see if it's more defined. But I mean, the main thing I think tonight is we're we're looking at park, you know, attached parking is an issue. Um, what else? And then we can kind of dig in a little bit more to them. Yeah. I think what uh, this is a back to a, a Jerry thing <clears throat> is what because we'll draft this, which takes care of the uh, what we're trying to do, and then we'll have the enforcement issue still that Jerry has is in what we've seen, and then he used that example, is you have people that go, I'm going to go build a garage, and I'm going to put it five feet from my neighbors. Um, I'm not going to have one hour rated walls or anything because it's just a garage. I'm not living in it or anything like that. And then most of the time, this is what they do. Uh, you know, six months into the construction or whatever, they walk into Jerry's office. You know what? I'm going to make it a bonus room. <laughs> we said the exact same thing on the 29th yeah. at, the, at the meeting. And then he, you know, what's his teeth? He's now has a garage that's five feet from the property line. Uh, it's not a fire, one hour fire rated wall. It needs to Are be- Are you talking about a detached garage? Yeah, detached. Well, if we eliminate detached- uh, No, I agree, but what's happening, Warren, is people, that's a separate thing. So now people are gonna still build garages. Yeah, okay. And then convert them into ADUs. That's, I don't know the exact number, and Jerry could, Tell us, but so that's out of the 25, we, the majority violate, are those. How do we violate those people, is what you're saying? Well, it's already uh, against the zoning. I mean, how, yeah, how it, much yeah. more? Well, it is and it isn't, Danielle, because what happens is, as he stated, they'll go, I'm doing the bonus room, and then they put in the full kitchen. Yeah. They, they basically make an apartment, you know, bathrooms, everything. And then he's trying to get them not to put in a stove, I think, and there must have been some language that allows, you know, if no stove, then it's you can not do really it. A kitchen. And, it's and not then really their a kitchen. lawyers are just saying, we're putting in a stove. And so Jerry has no teeth, so he's been using the. What about the height restriction on the attached garage? And he lost on that too yeah. with somebody. Yeah. Height restriction on the, on the building. On the well, Once I mean, they got the variance, right? So that's the other thing is we have to figure out if you can, line. this is a legal question for legal, but if but you can put a moratorium out. on after someone's been granted a variance, because what's happening is they go and say, I wanna, I'm building a garage, I wanna go over 24 feet. Um, and so 
I'm going to go 30, and, and you come to ZBA, and everyone's looking at you, and I, he just wants to build a garage? Oh, okay, you know, we'll, we'll grant it to him. And the next thing you know, he's doing the whole Z, you know, the whole ADU thing, he, she, whatever, doing the ADU thing, and, um, and there's no going back. So that's why if there's some sort of, you got to wait 10 years, if you were given a decision like, you can't come back and go change you know, the, the use or plan. Oh, or, okay. Because it's that incremental way that people have been doing it. They right, go and just right. get the, they get the... Basic. And right, they get the setback variance from and ZBA, then. and they're just showing that simple little garage. You and know, now they change with it. With nothing the, up to top, the <laughs> and yeah, then they come those. back with yeah. the full blown out kitchen, bathroom, so Jerry, Jerry may be Jerry may be able to help us with that. Yeah, I mean, that's... He, you know, but that's something you have to ask speak to it better than I do. I do. Okay. Um, yeah. And we could write, we'll, we'll write that in because. But is that something that only can regulate? That's just it. That's I why I mean you have to check with legal, but yeah, it, there's, a, there needs to be a method that that well, dissuades people I, from, the problem. Yeah, the from problem. doing a bait and switch. I mean, it's not yeah, an honest it's practice. Yeah, I know, but I think that the problem here is that if you go to the Board of Appeals for relief, you can go back to them again for relief. I mean, as many times as you want. Yeah, but when they know you're but now building, they have the you're building an apartment, they're going to be probably less we apt to give you the variance. We had one of these recently on North Street, where the garage was built within the side setback or quarter right, setback, right? right? They went down the beginning of North Street. Down yeah, down. yeah, and they came to us looking for another variance because they wanted to add on to it. But now that it was living space, it didn't meet the setback requirement. And I think I want to say it was changed owners in between. But then we kind of we had the discussion here of saying, well, maybe that person before built it, knowing it's it's adding this value, right? Yeah, yeah. And saying to the next person, well, just you can just go get a variance, you can go up, like but you got to, you know, right. so like you're building in assumed value that's hinging upon that. Yeah, and, and, and but we don't have to follow those the assumed value clause that they told the person. Right, right. But I mean, people are doing like to David's point, people are kind of. Banking on that bait and switch right. and getting away with it. And, and maybe what we can do in that case is, you know, talking, they're doing that. They haven't built the whole place out yet. Once they have an occupancy permit well, well, for the what property, about, what about then things? they can go back and make a change. But what is Reading doing about this to keep this from, are they just allowing it to happen so they don't care? That's a good question. I mean, Jerry might know. I mean, he talks to. They might everybody. not have the problem because they have ADUs in there. I think, it, I think it's the latter. It's, it's but again, much they, more common than they allow detached, right? Yeah. Especially on the west side. But, yeah. the but it, here lies right? the problem again, is even though we're not getting into that and we're staying with attached, we're, yeah. he still has that problem of people are going to continue to build garages and make them apartments. Even though we'll have this bylaw that has all the rules and everything with ADUs, you'll still get these off-the-books apartments. We, unless we say in that bylaw that they're illegal. Yeah, and I think that's what he needs, but it, that gets back to legal and what we can actually right, enforce. Right, right. But I agree. I mean, if they if it is known that in North Reading ADUs are illegal, then why can they continue to be, be built? And that's what we need to solve. Right. Well, um, we're going to take care of. What, we're going to make uh, well, legal, I mean, I, if, if you, you will. Read that whole law. You also read the part about when you if you make it if you install an ADU in your existing structure. They don't want the two front doors. They want the door on the side or the back. Right. And then, and then also the. Um, yeah, I saw um, that. They said if there's an existing door on the front, they want it to be made clear that, you know, however the doors are installed, that there's only one main entrance. I mean, all that language is all in there. It right? is in there. I didn't yeah. notice that too. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of helpful yeah, I read stuff the whole thing. <laughs> so that's why. Like, do sorry. they need an occupancy permit? I mean, I know they need one for the home. But what if they do it, like you said, if they do it for the garage? Do they have to get an occupancy permit? We're not going to allow garages. No, no, technically, no. I don't think with an accessory structure, it's just a certificate of completion. It's not a cert of oc. It, you know, it's, right. it's not occupancy. Which is, and yet, which, again, which, yeah, it's a it full is, apartment. It is a full well, apartment. Well, apartment. You know, but it's, yeah. you know, without, without a store. So you wouldn't give them, let's say, you, right, you wouldn't. So that's why Jerry can't do much. Yeah, he's he just giving them a certificate of completion. The building was all done according to the plan. The you know, electrician would sign off, the plumber signs off, the builder signs off, but there's no certificate of occupancy because it's already occupied. Right. And, and you know the, the stove part? 
I used to be a landlord, and in Revere, landlords had a supply, a stove, did not have to supply the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So in pay for water, probably right. No, in pay for water, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah because a renter, but I think. hot water they could pay for. Portable oh, yeah. water, you know, just drinking water. They, yeah, the actual. You, yeah. you, you could you could charge it for hot water. So yeah. it's a tricky one, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. So I don't know how we can we can ask around on that one. But yeah, so I don't. I mean, I you know, I'm just trying to figure out how much of this exists is ready by a law we want to adopt. I mean, do we like the door thing? I mean, is that something? Well, we you know what we should do? maybe do is it's uh, I think 12, 12 pages or was it six pages? This particular section yeah. is just go through kind of and highlight the ones that yeah. apply and make sense, and then whittle that down. Yeah, do. like reduce I mean, it all down. This is the first time we actually look at anything. We have to make a decision tonight. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I'm just trying we'll to just highlight no, no. some, some yeah. uh, points that we right. that we already that we've already decided on. And so. yeah, knowing her, she's already. She'll but this, stop this part, out this part is the positive for residents, older residents, to help. Um, you know, housing costs and in, in housing in general, the the in-house part. The other yeah. part is an enforcement part for Jerry. So again, what he came to us for is not necessarily to to do what we're talking about here. It's more to help him stop the ones that are illegal. And it's not right. really they're dangerous. They're not really even as you know, because you can imagine the contractors just working inside. They're not really calling him up for the I'm yeah. I'm, I'm mad in a door and a. Yeah, in the kitchen yeah. inside my house, he's not getting the call for that right. permit. You know, it's yeah. it's it's, it's, it's it's the one that's a frost, a frost wall, a slab, and a framing going up, and he's yeah. obviously yeah. got to be there for that. And people could see that construction, so they have to pull a permit, and that's where he's having the problem. So uh, we're gonna figure that out. Yeah, well, it, it, this is a good it's a good start. It's a good start, Daniel, giving us to us. It's not, we're not going to finish it tonight. No, I think that's fine. I, do you want me to put it on for next time? We can yeah, we should just it? try to keep it further. Yeah, talk about time. it half an hour every, every meeting. I just agree. Try to work, work try on to whittle it down. Hey, we've, already, we've already made a few decisions, so why don't we, uh, like Dave said, why don't we just go through and... Uh, we just said, Daniel, like highlight out of the six or so pages yeah. here, highlight the ones that apply to what we're trying to do. That I we like the one about the door, helpful. about the only one front door that you put, if you yeah, add an AD you want. You don't put the second door in the front, it has to be on the side of the back. Okay. Um, or you change what's there to, to make it look like it's a, another. Or if there's already, no, it says if there's already two doors on the front, you want to make it look like there's only one main entrance. Right. Mm -hmm. For the main house. I forget exactly how it's worded, but that's in there. Right. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Um, so just highlight those provisions that look like what we think. Yeah, we'll, we'll go. Okay. I think that was. Uh, I think that was for us, right? What? To go through this and highlight. Yeah, so for us, yeah, yeah, for the next meeting. Oh, for you guys. Not okay. Not yeah, you. Yeah, not, sure. not you. Did not we're trying to we'll do, we'll do extra, that. extra work. You get enough. Stop and job. Take a deep breath. We'll compile those and get them free. So which sections did you put out there? So five. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I think that this so those and, and again, yeah, and and has, the uh, one that she put up on in the, 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 the one. I have that a couple of that I short attached. updates and questions for you. Okay. Um, one question is, I was we had an inquiry about 51 Oakdale recently, which. Um, so 51 Oakdale was improved as part of the, uh, there was a Tower Hill, uh, sorry, School Hill Lane uh, property built and on the other side the roadway was improved under determination of access and there's a hydrant there. And so it's an unaccepted way but it has been improved and there is improved frontage. So I guess my question was, and this person looking to buy the property inquired, do they need to file determination of access? I mean technically they would because it's an unaccepted way, but it's also an improved one. So I wasn't sure whether the message was yes, you do need to file. I think they need to file. I mean, they want to build a house. They're, buy, they're, they're buying, buying a lot, lot to build a house. And there's already frontage there, but it's an um, unaccepted way. So uh, this is on 51 Oakdale. Oakdale. Yeah, yeah, it's Oakdale. right where Oakdale ends. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. It, but it's not approved that far. Uh, it's improved up to that hydrant, so there's a property. Yes, yeah. 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 And I remember that whole approval process. Yeah. So they would have to file because it's technically it's unacceptable. Right? I, I think yeah. if we don't make them file. They at least have to file. 
they at least have to yeah. file and come before us, yeah. and we okay. can make the decision if they have to do something or not. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, if, right. if they don't, if we don't make a file, then the next guy down the road Just won't file, file. Right. and then he right. might have to approve something. Okay. All right. It's that old thing. Um, okay. We don't want to battle that. <laughs> we did enough of that. <laughs> I went with um, Habitat for Humanity on a tour of several properties that they are potentially interested in a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and. Um, we ran out of time at the last meeting for me to talk to you about it, but I just wanted to mention they have let me know that they're interested in um, asking for some of our properties for development, and um, we're looking into what next steps might be, um, but I just wanted to make you aware the properties they're potentially looking at would be 46 and, 46, uh, 46 and 44 Oakdale, um, 57 Haverhill, and um, uh, 7 St. Teresa Street. So those are all in the affordable housing overlay district, and um, if fifty-seven Haverhill is that the one? Uh, that's the, the that's old RMLD old, uh, and R yeah. uh, RMLD yeah. yard. Oh, okay, right, right. I mean, they kind of somebody's using that too. Someone's parked there, like a big truck is there. Yeah, I don't so know it's there. like I'm sure the town's just not. I don't know. There's a gate. Sometimes it's open. Yeah. Um, but they're interested, so. Right across from New Street. Yeah, across from New Street. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking that is there is that municipal equipment that was in there? I don't know, it might be some of the town. The town might have some stuff in there. They do, yeah, you know, some Oh, you know, they were working. They were working down uh, on the right. tension yeah. lines. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. those guys might have been parking equipment in there with well, permission. They're done now. Yeah, I know, but that's ready. But that, yeah, ready lights still own that property, though, right? No, they traded that with us because they got they put the tra oh, yeah, transfer oh, yeah, yeah, station right, in, right, in, right, in right, our right, yard. Right. right. Um, and that's na uh, National Grid owns that, right. those wires, the high tension wires right. when they were in there. Yeah. But they pulled all their mats out, as I, if you've been by. Yeah, this hay right the on the road, and, and they've left all the bushes come back up. They did it, right. Yeah, they, yeah, they do it all the time. Yeah, if you they got across the wetlands, they, they put all bring in 12 by 12, it's all matted out. It's on the opposite side. They work on the opposite side. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, those, uh, yeah. They, you know, those like probably just come to good properties for that to go Yeah, so what they, they, uh, 44 and 46. So right across the street from 51. Um, Is it right across? Yeah, it's like down the street a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's on the other side of the street from that one that was done. Yeah. You cannot just back out. Well, the one that was done, yeah, also the Sean Ferris property is the same is the same side as that, but she had the School Hill Lane property, and that's when they did the water update. Yeah, that's what he was doing on Thursday. So it's the, it's the, yeah, it's, it's the same, yeah, it's, it's the other street, but it's the back to that street. It's right here, it's in here. Right. There's the School Hill locked off all the and that's the, and you can't even see the road, the road's not there. Okay. So I don't know when, um, at some point we're going to need to probably request some time to speak with the select board about the possibility of um, devoting these properties to this use. Um, and that might be coming up at some point soon. I just don't know when it could be. So I'll let you know if I hear. Um, and um, the TA asked me recently if we had considered picking up the signage bylaw again. Um, I know it was an issue. Um, you know, recent things come up and signs go up and our signage bylaws are pretty clearly out of compliance with uh, <laughs> what's allowed now. So since we last talked, I know we did a ton of work a number of years ago <coughs> and it, we just couldn't, we, we couldn't move it forward. Um, but I think since then other communities have done it and are pretty happy with their bylaws. So we well, could we start should, to pick this up again. Yeah, let's take a look at, well, let's take a look at what they got. Yeah, they who's, got, got, who's got the good we have a lot of, new we have ones. A lot of questions. We have yeah. a lot of questions about about what we could actually do legitimately. Right. And then also about that decision there that we got made that, that, yes. that limited the content. Right. Yes. So, so this so would all have to be right. content neutral. So we can't, we can't mention political right. signs. We can't mention any of that. It's just. Yeah, you just can't mention them. Right, right. But you can regulate them in other kinds of ways. So right. I'll see. I know Wilmington did so theirs so recently. Right. Um, I'll take a look at a few. Chris, they can't be backlit, right? <laughs> So they can't be moving. <laughs> yeah, and they can't be backlit. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I, I don't know if that's something that we... I, 
I'm guessing this coming town meeting is not enough time. Oh, for that's some that. Okay, so I'll so just start. I'll, I'll start it like we're starting the ADUs. <coughs> we'll just start to chip away at it. The ADUs is going to be much easier than the than the science bylaws. Oh yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we identified a lot of issues when we last time we dealt with it. We, yeah. we that's why it. we walked away. That's why we walked away with it. Ne never How many years for? Yeah. Twenty. <laughs> it's never really solved a lot of those issues. So we'll, so we'll see what other people did. Okay. Because, because it's not just what they did, it's what they did, what they got challenged on, yes. and how the courts decided. Because mm -hmm. that will give us uh, some information we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. So okay. we'll be, it will be better, better prepared to... <coughs> and I think that's kind of what we were waiting for. Yeah, we'll be better prepared to make so people, people were writing bylaws at the time we were looking at it. Yeah. And figuring if they got them through, that we'd have a better chance of getting picky pieces out of theirs. I can probably also ask KP if they have other communities who they feel have been successful with yeah, not getting the, challenged. What, what's her name? Came what? in and talked to us about that. Yeah, she did. Yeah, some of what we got, we got KP. Oh yeah, but no, but now I can ask if they have, they must have yeah. more municipal clients from now who have done uh, this, here, and like whose bylaws are successful and working, and right. who's no, got, you know, ran into trouble. They should be usually pointing in the right direction. Right, yeah. So, so the, at least the ones that have come before us. They just all right, well, I guess that's just for tonight. I guess it's so, just, I don't know. But they've made the Dave, we're gonna, I'm going to return to you. Didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> I was explaining to him about the signage Thank stuff. You. Oh.